Welcome everyone to the second day of the Prague International Chess Festival. This is Sagar Shah and I have with me the wonderful Amruta Mokal. Hello Amruta, how are you? I'm good Sagar. Yesterday first day was super exciting. We had three decisive games in the master section. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, I think it was a very exciting day. Uh, all those who say classical chess is dull, boring will definitely not find that kind of chess at Prague because the players here are extremely ambitious, young, talented, out there for the throat, some looking for practice for the candidates, some looking to gain ratings, some looking to win this tournament. This is going to be fun. Amruta, let's have a look at today's pairings. Uh, who is taking on whom? There is a very, very big clash between two leaders of yesterday who won. Parham Maksudlu takes on Pragnananda. Oh, and yes. I think this is the game where which we all are actually very, very excited for. And by the way, these are the boards. Already the action has begun. Today is a very busy day in Prague because we have the open section starting and we have three streamers who have come here <laughs> who are streaming. That's uh, the Botes sisters, Andrea and Alexandra and also Dina Bell and Kaya. So a lot of streams going out from here. Also, we have a Czech um, uh, commentary in the joining room. This is the English one. Yeah, and I believe that Vishy Anand was there as well to autograph signing and to inaugurate maybe the first round. Yes, he, he actually the made round. the first move on the board of Pragnananda and Maksudlu. So this was really nice. Uh, our viewers got to see it. And, and Sagar, right now in the uh, five boards, we can see three games have begun with E4. Isn't that awesome? Yes. But we are going to start off with the game which with started D4. off with D4. Let's go to the game of Pragnananda and Maksudlu, the two leaders of yesterday. Prag uh, is playing with the black pieces. Maksudlu has white and the game started off with the move D4. Amruta, that was what was played here. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get the board and the players camp. In a bit, what you can see on your screen right now is Vincent Kaimar taking on the local hero, David Navara. This is going to be exciting because Vincent lost yesterday. He yes. started this tournament with uh, uh, two black games because yesterday also he was black. Oh, double black. Prague. Now that's not an easy task, especially when you've lost the first game. Absolutely not at all easy. Uh, and there we have it, the chess board here, D4 by Parham Amruta. <coughs> Prag responds back with knight to f6 and then comes the move bishop f4. Now this is known as the, we can ask our viewers. <laughs> Guys, Which place is it? <laughs> yes, we are in Prague but this is the London. The London system is on the board with bishop f4 and Amruta, this already shows Parham's willingness to get a fighting position. I completely agree. He's always in a rash mood, whereas Prague is calm. So let's see, what do you expect from the game today? Zara? I, I expect a big fight. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as uh, I, I always uh, love to see Parham's games because, you know, there is never a dull moment. And uh, that being said, Pragnananda, as you rightly pointed out, is a more solid player who likes to be correct. Uh, and so this will be a clash of styles. Yes, and Sagar, they both have played number of times. They ah, played really? a lot of what, online what games. Has been their, over, uh, it has been a mixed result uh, kind of thing. Exact statistics I don't have, but it's very mixed. And I think first time they played maybe in World Juniors, if I'm not wrong. But that's the point. They've wow. played many times. Many games between them. And right now, Prague goes for the symmetrical line with d5, very solid. Uh, e3 played here mm -hmm. by Maksudlu. With this, he opens up his bishop and then maybe he keeps the option open of putting the knight on c3, d2, he keeps it open. So, very flexible system. Bishop now develops to uh, f5, he puts a bishop on a good square and you know Amruta, this is something for all our viewers to know. The moment this bishop comes out and the moment uh, that happens in d4 openings, something has become slightly weak. What is it? Mm, that's a good question to the chat. Guys, do think it doesn't matter if we don't tell you if you are right or not. <laughs> you will get to know that anyway. Yes, but what is it Amruta? If you can answer it for me. 
Yes, Sagar, B7 point. It's that pawn, the poison pawn. Many times we call that. Exactly, the B7 pawn is weak and that's exactly what Parham went for. He played the move C4 and now his idea is to bring the queen here and to attack this pawn. Oh, already? Yes. yes. But then uh, let's see where it goes. By the way, in this position with C4, Already games have been played by Karuana, So Wesley, Kamski, Nihal, Nakamura. Okay, many top Lord. players. So it's yes. a very famous line. E6 was played by Prag. So Prag moves his e pawn, opens up his bishop, mm -hmm. and immediately Maksudlu goes and attacks here. Now look at Prag. Prag is thinking. He's like, you know, I can defend it calmly with Queen C8. I can do that, but but deep within, he wants to go for a tactical idea, Amruta. More fighting. Mm -hmm. More fighting, yes. tactical. Sagar, I don't want to fight with you right now. I'm in no mood to fight, for no, sure. No, he will but do it. He will do it, Amruta. He will no, play he this move. He should do it, Sagar. He should. <laughs> Please tell me what is that move, according to you, that actually is a very powerful one here for black. The first thought is knight c6, oh. king b7, knight b4. Guys, this is a very aggressive player <laughs> here. She can see it exactly what the problem is with the bishop standing here, this point, and with the knight coming in here, this can get really weak. Exactly. Sagar, as we say that uh, when you gain something, you lose. Sorry, when you lose something, you gain something. Yeah. <laughs> so like we... Oh yeah, of course, when you gain something, you lose something also. <laughs> yeah, but it's better to put it the other way. It just feels more positive. So for the B7 point, which became weak, C2 was another point, which was under some pressure. Yes, exactly. And so the knight jumps in here and now wants to give a check. So the white move is knight a3 stopping knight c2 check now i do do this and i'm a pawn up as uh, as white right yes. and my queen is very well placed but that queen can also get trapped but remember the bishop is attacking this pawn so i cannot trap it so easily mm, that's true that queen is like you know in the in the forest it's in a beautiful villa there mm -hmm. but it can get trapped like it can get at some point very lonely yes yeah so that we'll and also, see. also or yeah it it's, enjoy. A, it's a high maintenance see. villa there because <laughs> then you know you have to go and keep it clean and so on but look at this idea now rook comes here and mm -hmm. Amrita, you're going to love this because i simply take this pawn and here white is clearly better so the question does remain that after here what is the move that can be played which gives black an advantage and it's not at all easy and that is the reason why Prag has been thinking for I six minutes. I love the question, completely love it. I, I would start calculating with c5, knight b5, um, knight yes. c2 check because... Yes, but, Amrita, but then also c5, you have to be careful of pawn takes pawn and then the bishop jumping in to give yeah. you a check. So you know so, what I would do is I'll calculate c5, knight b5 and later I'll come to cd5 and I will say okay it doesn't work this card. Yes. Now a new move, new candidate move. But here's the here's the amazing move Amruta bishop and you... you knight d3 check. Bishop uh, d3. Yes but knight d3, I mean the thing is... Uh, here I can the, the, just The take. thing is, I just got too excited for no reason. Uh, yeah, and the, and the problem is now I Queen give you a check. Queen C7, Bishop B4. That's what I thought, but... Yeah, this is a very irritating check to you. So, this is not working out. So, then mm, the question is, what question. do you do here and maybe... Uh, Sir, can I try a final attempt instead of Knight D3? Because sometimes it's very irritating for a chess player to not be no, able no, to please, find please, that. You know? Please try it out and please tell me what are your thoughts. Another move, I, it comes to my mind, you will call me crazy and I believe it can't be a good move. G5, bishop c7, G5, queen oh, c8. This is too queen much, Amruta. This is too much. This is too much. Yeah, so I am. Crazy. We have few viewers okay, here. Let's just and here is our question break. to you if you want to try it. What <laughs> is the move? that black should play here pragnananda's game has oh they they are not able to ah, see there's no, there's no tv ah. here we'll call our producers to get the tv working for our viewers oh, sorry, very for, sorry that. for that yeah uh, we have we can watch it here but it will soon be there as well but 
this position amruta the right move is to take the pawn and then if the bishop takes this pawn then there is a very very big move which gives black a winning advantage mm -hmm. and knight that d5, is knight d5 yeah knight bd5 bishop e4 okay you had to be very very tactically alert there I like it. I think this whole thing is not very easy. D takes c4, especially when there were so many natural possibilities to consider. But I bet for Prague, firstly, I bet that he is at least prepared in this uh, at this moment, and yeah. then he's trying to just you know think which one to choose. Yes, and that is the reason why we are right now on this position and. Pragnananda has to make a very very big decision whether to go for the tactical move which is knight c6 or play the more positional queen c8 but I believe Prag has never shied away from a fight and today as well he wouldn't do so. We are waiting and actually it's very rare to see Pragnananda be low on time you know than his opponent in the opening. He's generally very well prepared so kudos to Parham Maksudlu for getting him out of his comfort zone making him sort of think here. Uh, and by the way Prag is wearing his jacket which is uh, which has now the words written Adani. Ooh. Yes, and we all know that yes. Adani is one of the biggest conglomerates in India. It has like multiple companies uh, under its uh, umbrella and it decided to support Prague. And that is actually huge because somewhere in India you will see that big, big companies are coming in to support chess. We have the Mahindra group which is doing the Global Chess League. Now the Adani group which is supporting Prague. Tata Steel always has been happening for years in Waikanze and now in Kolkata since five years, the Rapid and Blitz. So all the big companies there, yeah? Amazing, Sagar, amazing. Yeah. One of the favorite companies, I would say, which is in chess, which on a global scale, I would say is uh, Puma. Mm. It supports Magnus and it's something which we use kind of a lot. So. You gave a very good idea, actually, that in uh, just like Puma supported Champions Chess Tour and some events, this event in Prague can be supported by Bata, oh, that's uh, a the, the, very the good brand idea. which actually uh, is very popular in India, the shoes brand, <laughs> but it actually originated in Czech Republic and uh, we, we, were, we had no clue about that. Yeah, we were so shocked to hear that from Peter when we came here and yeah. we go, went to their showroom and it would be really a nice thing if at well, all Bata is able to support the Czech chess. Let's see if that happens. Uh, then there will be Bata we, we versus hope, Puma. <laughs> <laughs> we hope next year when we come here, that's what's going to happen. By the way, Pragnananda is about to make his move. He is thinking about what he should be playing. Should he go knight c6? Amruta, I am going to have a ball today if knight c6 happens. Because then into really messy positions. I know and you know what Sagar Tabatabai has played that with the black pieces oh. a few years ago but he's beaten his opponent 2300 and uh, not many top players I find that they've played this move. In fact knight c6 it looks very risky. Yes and by the way uh, are, are you able to see now? Ah wonderful great uh, so now People can see the board, Amruta. If we have any questions, they can answer it, which is wonderful. Ah, uh, my task is easier now. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to another board, or should we stick here because we can now? No, maybe we can. Uh, ah, wait. He does play knight d7. Oh, Prague goes for a more sort of measured approach. He puts his knight on d7 and he asks Parham, "Do you want to come and snatch the pawn there?" And Sagar. Karuana has played this with So Wesley oh. in St. Louis Blitz event. Wow, okay. So in now. But he's beaten So Wesley. Now, if I take this pawn, this is actually a big mistake. And believe it or not, actually, it, it looks like a free pawn. But imagine that I give, I hit your queen, and then you take this pawn again because you're supported by the bishop. I take so here. Bingo? You take here and now I simply chop this pawn and guess what? This knight is being attacked brutally here. 
Oh, I just forgot about that because I was thinking, oh, C5 when white is a pawn up. Yes, but, but the knight is hanging, up. so you mm. save your knight. But then bishop b4. Exactly, you go bishop b4. I defend here with my knight here. And now maybe we can ask our viewers yes. here, what would Good. you play as black? How do you put more pressure? You can you can guess your moves. You can shout it out here, and no one can see you. Only your voice. So, what is the move that Black can play here? There is a lot of pressure. The rook looking here, the bishop looking here. A brilliant job. That is a fantastic move. The knight jumps in. There is more pressure here, and I think for Black White, the only way is rook d1. But look at the way in which he's completely tied up. So I think Prague can win in multiple ways. One of them is just simply attacking this knight and then this one falls. So I mean, if we are on this position, of course, Maxwell is not at all going to no, let no, no. this we, position We have the happen. little board so on the right, uh, sorry, here, mile, which is the live board. So uh, people know what is the live position. We were just analyzing if Maksudlu goes greedy and snatches this pawn, that would be a terrible idea here. Okay, so then Maksudlu might just develop his knight to c3 and this is what he might do. But I love the fact how yesterday mm -hmm. Prague blitzes out 24 moves in the opening and today he and his opponents are thinking from move number 5. <laughs> so that's, that's the beauty of uh, chess. One day you are very well prepared, the next day you are completely thinking from scratch. Let's go to the next game, Amruta. Which one would you like to see? Should we look at? I think we looked at out of three winners of yesterday, we looked at two of them. So the third one. We think alike. I like it. Let's go to the What's game. What's going to happen after oh, 15 Abdus years, Sagar? <laughs> what else do you expect? Uh, you mean 15 years later, or now that we are living <laughs> together for 15 years? Ah, okay. So we think alike, huh? So with it playing with white today, double white for him. He was white with David Nawara yesterday. Today also he is white. Oh, and I did meet David by the way today and he did greet me with a namaste. It was we very sh nice. You should learn, Amruta, what to say like namaste oh, in, in Czech. Czech. Yeah. Yes, maybe the chat maybe, will maybe, help me yeah, and after uh, we 15 can ask minutes our viewers, I will read. Uh, do also. you know how to greet? Yes, what do you say? Dobri 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 Yes, so Dobri Amruta, Dobri next time when you meet David Nawara, I if will. he says nam Namaste to you, you should say Dobri Den. Okay, that I, would. I don't think you pronounce it, pronouncing it perfectly, but I will learn it. But you know, I, I know it because when once I made the payment with my credit card on that machine, hmm? it did say to me Dobri Den. <laughs> So, I think yeah. it's also Spelling thank, might be correct. It's also thank you. Uh, perhaps it's used for that. Yes. Nice. Uh, okay. E4 by with it here. Nodirbek responds with the very solid E5. And by the way, if we can have with it and uh, Nodirbek on our screen, uh, that would be wonderful. Their video with it, Amruta. If we can just have a look at the statistics, I believe has beaten Nodirbek several times. At least in my memory. I remember the World Rapid 2022, even in this World Rapid, he managed to beat him. I think overall, Vidit has had a huge plus score against uh, Nodirbek. So today, Nodirbek is out there to sort of settle the scores, maybe get one win into the bag or at least play a very solid game. But you can see Vidit is very smart with his opening choice against a player like Nodirbek. Yeah, if the last game they played in Tata Steel this year, with it beat Northern Yes, exactly in Tata Steel. But even before that, didn't he win a world world? Uh, yes, in Asian in games, Asian with games it also as well. beat oh, over there. Yes, and before that in Tata Steel India Blitz, with it lost in that Blitz game. Uh, but in the Rapid game, he beat Abdul Sataro, and then there was this Armageddon where he again lost. So. It is a bit of mixed results. But result, you know, Amruta, in the classical games, Vidit has been scoring the wins, like Tata ah. Steel in uh, Asian games. Yes. And so I have a, just my general feeling is that he has a plus score against him. And uh, you can see Northerbeck goes for Knight F6, the Petrov. Oh, today. yeah. And in the Tata Steel, let's not forget that Vidit had gone with the Catalan where he played the G3, Bishop G2, and ah, Northerbeck yes. in the opening had, after opening, and made a 
terrible move in that sense mm. i think that was the last day i believe this was what with it started in tata steel but yes, today he, he goes e4 e5 e4 and then when he goes for the petrov with it says i don't want to go for droish lines and he goes for knight c3 now we have the four knights on the board and with it brings his bishop out to b5 i remember that this is the opening with it played against jordan van for east as well if i'm not mistaken oh but wait a second i'm just checking if they have played this have before this. no i know but i was thinking ah. that if they've played that before so so well, knight comes anyway. in now here's my question to to our viewers here what if white simply snatches the pawn why is this a bad move because you know black has come in with the knight wants to actually take this bishop but this bishop is protected so why don't we simply snatch this pawn what would be a good move for black here and this is a very uh, nice little move to play and it's a very typical idea in this opening when you have a knight here and a pawn here the easiest way to win back material is yes beautiful so what's your name carol 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 here, Queen e7, fantastic. This is the correct move, hitting the knight and the pawn. And if the knight wow. now retreats back, then I can at the very least capture this, take and snatch this pawn with a check. And I'm back, equal material. Black is doing fantastically well. Okay, so clearly, Vidit cannot snatch the pawn, so he went back, bishop c4. And now, he played bishop c5 but this is playing with fire because now with it said thank you so much for the pawn and not only that he's attacking now the f7 point so now they're back now push played queen e7 and this is insane chess i think amruta am i right that jordan versus with it happened this absolutely way absolutely right yes and and but, but and that was this tata steel but in reverse January. colors exactly with it was black Yes, and if I'm not mistaken, Amruta, I was already, uh, I maybe I was commentating from Vadodara at that point. No, this game, I I think so. I was already there. What's the no, date? No, 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 maybe not. Maybe not. I, I was still at home. Date. Yeah. So queen e seven, and now if you go and take this pawn on f seven, this is a big mistake. It's an error, and maybe you guys want to think. What is the best move for black here? Because look, I'm actually going after you. I'm going after your rook. And if you ma move your rook, then you're going to lose time, material like rook f8. I can at least castle here. But there is a very, very good move that black has. And this is how you play openings. You kind of hit your opponent and maybe black to move. What is the move here that black can play? A strong move. You can all try it out whenever you feel like it. Just shout out the move. You feel like uh, we had Carol who gave a lot of answers, but just feel free to be wrong. And I think it, we'll have a nice time because there's so many games happening here. We can enjoy a lot of positions. So knight f7, if taken, would not be a good decision because black has a very strong move here which is d5 and with this mm. i block your bishop your bishop now pawn cannot take because it's pinned so you take let's say with the bishop then now i simply can take knight, knight takes and it's already this knight is falling but what if uh, instead of bishop d5 you take on h8 yes you, you can do that but, that but that knight is trapped forever and i take your bishop so i will get two pieces for a rook yeah, at yes. the very least so clearly you can't take with the knight but then the question comes can i take with the bishop but then i simply move my king away and now you have double trouble because your knight is hanging and if your knight moves your bishop hangs yeah you lose material so knight f7 or bishop f7 is a mistake you Lanya. cannot do it so with it calmly goes back with his knight and now with it is hoping that norderbeck comes in and snatches this pawn because if he does that, then with it will simply castle and at the end of everything, this rook is coming in here and creating this havoc hmm. on the e-file. Okay, so Nodirbek does not do it. What does Nodirbek do here? 
you know the kind of player he is. Always goes for aggressiveness, counter-attacking chess. What should Black play here? Just, you have to get your pieces out and you but have to make use that the king is still in the, the center. It's on the board. The move is... He already played it. The move is d5. Fantastic. Just hitting in the center. Okay. So, with it, of course, very well prepared. He goes now, bishop takes d5. So, he takes with the bishop. Knight takes. And here, I don't know why after with its next move, Noderbeck has been in deep thought here because he takes here. Oh, he just takes now. He takes the knight. Knight takes c3. Actually, did he go knight d5 because the main move is bishop g4. Oh, really? So, instead of taking this uh, knight, a uh, bishop, the main yeah. move is to pin here, right? Yes, ah. bishop g4. Yes, that's exactly what Vidit did against Jordan Van Forest, right? Uh, I guess so. I know, I'm not sure. I don't think Vidit played that with the black pieces. Maybe, I, I believe that this is how you generally play. But, Norderbeck's knight takes d5 is not the most common move. Yeah, exactly. So, Very few games. So, then he takes here. And now, if you take with the bishop here, then knight takes d5 happens. And if you take the pawn, my knight could come back here to e3. Or I can even play queen up and trade. So, that's the reason why he played the move knight takes knight here. After knight takes knight, knight takes knight has happened. And Vidit is now thinking. But you know what? After pawn. knight d4, if there are a few games, not a single game black has won. Oh. It's all the games white has won and just one. But not with draws. strong players, right? Yeah, but Sandeep and Chanda, 2600, he was white. He's played that against 2366. Then we have another 2500. So the result, practically, it is way easier for white to play this position. Okay, so guys, what would you take back with? Would you take with your B pawn or D pawn? Because it's a very genuine question mm. here and that is what Vidit is thinking. Vidit is like, should I take and, you know, break this rule that always capture towards the center and open up my bishop? Or should I take here, kind of bring one more pawn, open the B file? What would you prefer? Not so simple though. Also, remember that white is two pawns up, Amruta. But he will lose one of the pawns. So the but question... But I do think here it is more logical to play, I mean, one of the takes. <laughs> I don't oh, know yes. what the guys oh, Amruta, are thinking here. You are absolutely right. It is very logical to, <laughs> to take back in one way. Otherwise, we'll be I like how out. you read my mind, Sagar. <laughs> but it's dangerous. Hmm. I... I think, Amruta, that those who are like playing the Petrov and in the opening, they always want to take in a way that it opens up the bishop, right? Yes. But, so let's say if I take here and you take the pawn, check. Okay. What is the move that now you play? Like generally you don't, want, you don't want to break castling. Yeah, you go so queen e2. Yeah, bishop e3, but then maybe your g2 pawn hangs. And so double bishop. Yeah. I, I just sort of pin you. You take and you, I take back with the king. And now we come to this position which needs to be assessed. Because white is a pawn up. But black has the bishop pair. So the question is, who's better here? The bar gender, uh, answers it well. It says uh, equal. But I, I do get this feeling that Vidit finds himself comfortable in such positions. Oh, I'm pawn up. I will grind for next five hours like he did against yesterday. Yeah, Vidit is able Navara. to keep that uh, pawn, you know, very safe and sound like a pet dog. You will kind of care for it and then <laughs> it's going to... Yeah, he would, he would care for his uh, position. And you know, brother, just put the bishop here, king here, bring your rook to the center, play a long game, and who knows what will happen. So, why is Norderbeck, like, did he miss, or is it his opening preparation no, where he feels that this is a The draw? position is not bad. Like, generally, black can just play bishop d7, long castle, bring his rook in, and try to fight for equality. So, mm -hmm. in a way, in this position, I think... We cannot be sure about how both players are thinking, but the objective evaluation is that it's very slightly better for white. The okay. pawn seems Slight a little more important. 
I would be very amazed if at all Nodirbek has gone into this with his preparation. Mm. Yeah, but okay, Amruta, I think there are a few games, uh, but not at the highest level. We'll see how this pans out. How about we go to the game uh, of Vincent Keimer versus yes. David Nawara? Because this is a very, very interesting battle. D Vincent lost yesterday. So he's looking for blood today. You know, he's like, if today I can make a comeback, but facing, uh, he's facing David. Yeah, and David had a long game yesterday. Will that tiredness, will it affect what he was on the defending side? So today also we have to see what's going yes, to happen. Yes, and, and you know, Amruta, when we finished yesterday, we went for dinner. And uh, it's just right there in the next room. And there we saw David was also there. But with it was not, because their game ended the last. But with it did not come. Because I think he was having uh, Maybe Indian, food. Indian food in his room. <laughs> uh, ordered, but David was having food here. E4 was played by David. Vincent goes E5. Mm -hmm. With it, uh, David brings his knight. Vincent knight C6. Bishop goes here. And this is known as the Spanish. Bishop B5, A6. Bishop A4. The knight comes out. Castles. Bishop E7. He goes D3. And the more solid approach here by, by David because clearly the main line for many, many years was rook E1. Bringing your rook here and then later on trying for C3, D4. But nowadays D3 is played quite a lot. So B5. Bishop b3 and you know Amruta, uh, I was recently at the home of uh, Anish Giri mm -hmm. and we recorded something on openings and he told me a very beautiful thing uh, which which actually made me think a bit because let's say if I castle here a very good move for white here is to play a4 and this provokes a sort of a small little concession from black and I was like what sort of con uh, concession because I can play my bishop here what is the big problem and then Anish told me generally you don't want to put your bishop here because you would love to put your bishop on this diagonal and so whenever this is the position and a4 is played if you go rook b8 then I will eventually get the a file or if you play b4, then you are giving up the c4 square a bit. So, <laughs> castle a4 is giving white something to play for. But that's why Vincent goes d6. And now if you see a4, he puts his bishop on d7. Ah. And now the bishop is on that diagonal mm -hmm. where you want it to be. So, very wow. interesting stuff. Yes, yeah, very subtle. Sure. Very subtle. I mean, I wouldn't, I would also wonder, oh, why do you want a bishop on that diagonal? Only bishop on b7 is also developed in Ray Lopez. Yes, but, but this diagonal sometimes is not that active. Correct, because of the granite on d3, 4. Exactly. Pawns. I completely agree. So, c3 played. Maybe we have, Amruta, one question for our viewers here. Just if in this position, white is careless and plays knight to c3. Why is this a bad move? So if at this position I was playing, <laughs> then why? You would, you would do this, huh? Let's knight say I'll C3. go knight c3. Yes, it's why? a very natural move. But why is it bad? It's a very simple move, but there is some problem with it. Which is why a4 is a very good move. I can also say c3 is a very good move here. a3 is a good move. But oh, knight now that's c3 a lo th that's a lot of things, is a bad yeah? move. Yeah. <coughs> If I'm considering those hints correctly, am I? Yes. Uh -huh. You would like to answer or should No, no, no. I it? thought you got the move. Because you have been reading my mind yeah, today, yeah, no, so I, I don't need I, to I say got the it. move. <laughs> I got it, Amruta. I, I know. I can see from your face, you know the move. Pawn to b4. Well, if you play pawn to b4, I'm very happy because it kind of opens that up was this. The move. That was the hint you were giving. C3, A3, everything was stopping b4 and now you say... W was that the move in your mind? Yes, oh, you cannot no. read my mind, okay. Sagar. What's yes. happening? Yes, we need to live more years together actually because clearly I couldn't read your mind here. But, but it's not B4, so you took all of us, including me and the viewers, not in everyone, the wrong though. direction. Not everyone. Uh-huh. Uh, 
this knight c3 uh, b4 is just the kind of move I want because I jump in here, my bishop gets this diagonal. It's very cool. Uh, but the move that I was waiting for was knight a5. And with this, I can actually Oof. win How your bishop oh because God. now it cannot escape from there. And this is a very important of bishop. Of course, of course, a3, c3, you're making the square for yes. the bishop. Yes. And that is the Rui Lopez bishop or you say the Spanish bishop, which you shouldn't give up. And so here, a4 played by David. He knows all these things. Like maybe when he was very little, he learned all of it. C3 played, now wants to get this very flexible structure. Black castles. Mm -hmm. Bishop comes back. H6 by Vincent. Today he is not playing with fire. You know, yesterday Prague did come to G5. Today he says no Bishop G5 business. Rook comes here. And you can see how slow this position is. Both sides slowly getting their pieces into the game. Bishop drops back. H3, I'm imagining later on the knight will come here. He goes rook b8. Now he takes, pawn takes. And what is the most natural move? I go knight f1 because I'm on my journey either here or here angling for these central squares. And then d5. Oh, all of a sudden, you know, we were like calmly enjoying the thing. Everything was going slow and steady. And suddenly Vincent hits in the center. And now the game will become sharp. And David takes it. He takes the pawn on d5. So now there is always pressure on the e5 point. I think the move d5 by Vincent was slightly provocative there. And he takes back with the knight. Okay. By the way, Vincent has played with bishop d7 against Predike. Uh -huh. I mean, so not just... You know, you know Amruta, Vincent has played many lines, yeah. but he kind of repeats them, yeah? Like one, uh, he goes back to one of the lines he's played before and so on. So if you really prepare well against him, you might get something that he's played before. Now, uh, knight e5 is the, uh, is e5 is the weak pawn, actually, in generally in these structures. But right now, it's defended twice. You know, it's attacked twice, it's defended twice. What would you think is a good move here for white. If you were in David Nawara's shoes, what would you play? A question to all of you here. What would you play here? And you can just shout out the move. It's completely okay to be wrong. But it would also be nice if you can start thinking like these super GMs, you know, what is the move that white could play? And also, let me add an information, Sagar. Aronian versus Swiss. 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 Darius, yeah. Has they reached this position? Yes. Ooh. Aronian was white, and that was an USA championship in 2023. Okay. Hushenbeth versus Pavli, this also. So, this position has been played very few, before. Very few. Less only, games, but yeah. it has been played. And here, one of the very yeah, natural moves that comes to mind is to play your knight to g3. Just that has happened in the games as well. And I, I, I can sort of bet here that David goes for this move because, you know, it's the most natural move, most unassuming move. You put your knight there, you are looking at these important squares on f5 and h5. But the question is, now, what does black do? Because, I, you know, my, uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit sort of excited to push my pawn to f5. But look, suddenly the position is terrible. And the big reason why you shouldn't be pushing your F pawn in this position is brilliant. Bishop goes to B3 and this is just very bad. Yeah, you cannot go Bishop E6. The E5 pawn would be lost. Exactly. Exactly. Suddenly the rook is no longer protecting the pawn and white is winning. So... I do. I cannot do. This. So you can't go for the craving, sir. If you feel no. like eating a limon ice cream every day, you can't do. That. Yes, or or this uh, sort of chimney, uh, which is very famous in Prague. By the way, guys, highly recommend you to go to the city center and get that chimney, uh, <laughs> which is like a cone. Inside, you can add whatever you want, Nutella. And then Sagar becomes a 10-year-old, <laughs> enjoying that. Uh, strawberries, and it's just one of the best things you will find here. But um, 
yeah sometimes you have to sort of stop your cravings you have to be calm cool collected you have to eat your vegetables you have to sort <laughs> of uh, be disciplined here so maybe i guess he could go back knight f6 he could also play his what happened in the game one i would like to show you this moment that in aronian's game uh, knight g3 b4 was ah, played ah yes very logical push the pawn Put pressure Bishop here. D2. Defend this. Okay. And look at this. After B takes C3. Yeah. B takes C3. Yeah. Knight F6. Knight F6. Yeah. Aronian made a very interesting move here. Mm. Okay. Let me think. What would Aronian have played? And Amrutha now. He is a very creative player, as you know. So yeah. something which is. I am. I am assuming. A, which is a, not a normal uh, plan. I am assuming he would have gone D4, but then that's a very normal move to Correct. open up your bishop. Here, uh, yeah, like a plan, yeah, something. Sorry, this way. Ah, maybe he goes c4, bishop c3. No, not that. Wow. Now I understand how you guys feel, yeah, when I ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't guess what to do. It's so. Uh, there's a song I keep singing. It's a Bollywood song, and which is? But it does have one English word as well. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have to sing amruta you can't just say i keep singing mujhko bhi tu lift kara de oh rick, uh, rook lift whenever amruta sings this i i get it do you think he played rook a4 yes and then wow. he went rook h4 so it was very creative nice and then if you can get your rook here and then sack your bishop at some point it can become a dangerous attack yeah yeah so that's something we can keep in mind if at all uh, david things like that let's see if david plays this in this fashion we are right now waiting for david to make a move this is the live board position he's taking his time because he's ahead on the clock he has 1 hour 20 minutes vincent has 1 hour 8 minutes which game should we go next to i think we have one game pending right two games we have bartel versus rapport gukesh versus guen thai dai wan let's, let's go let's ask the chat let's ask the viewers <laughs> <laughs> Should we go to Gukesh versus Guen Thai Dai Wan because yes, we that's also what have the, the that's what the viewers have said right okay. now. Okay, so there we have. By the way, Guen Thai Dai Wan from Czech Republic, one of the young talents here. I ah. believe he's just um, maybe twenty twenty one years old, uh, not not more than that, uh, and he's he's very good. He's okay. about twenty six hundred, although he's the last seed of this tournament rating wise. So he opens the game with c4. Gukesh goes e6. Knight uh, pawn to g3. I was going to say he goes knight c3, but pawn g3, d5, bishop g2, and suddenly Gukesh says, "I am in an ambitious mood today. I'm going to push my pawn." And remember, whenever Black plays like this, he wants to play for the full point because you are wasting a tempo in the opening by moving your same pawn twice. which is not highly recommended but you get space which is quite a lot you know in the opening so knight f3 pawn to c5 castles knight e7 what is gukesh doing i can't understand did he really go knight e7 yeah knight f6 is the main move knight c6 is also this reminds me you know this reminds me of vishi anand's game against uh, Boris Gelfand from their World Championship. Mm -hmm. D4, Knight F6, C4, G6, F3. If I'm not mistaken, Bishop G7, E4, C5, D5, D6, like this. And now Vishy plays this move, Knight E2, so that he puts his knight from E2 to C3, and then this knight comes to D2 later. Ah, uh, like in French, also many times they do. Knight, knight the or, other knight g1 or, or, knight or in karokan when you play knight e7 knight c6 in advance Basically but okay in chess. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that it happens in many openings so maybe gukesh is saying to himself i don't like my knight here i'm going to bring my knight here which is interesting uh, d3 and by the way guys a question to all of you this is a reverse structure after the move e3 of which opening mm, good question Yes, fantastic job! It's a reversed Benoni. But if you give this position to someone uh, who's just kind of seeing it for the first time, they will be like, "What the hell happened? Why are these two knights sitting like this?" Yeah, they're you know, fighting with each other. 
Yeah, maybe Gukesh is very, very inspired by his last few days that he spent in Weisenhaus, yeah, where he was playing chess 960. Ah, yeah, just, could just be random possible. positions. He, and of course, as we know, Gukesh, who has not worked with engines for many, many years, mm. uh, he will come up with something which is not very commonly played. By the way, he's drinking tea, is it? Because I don't see Gukesh often drinking uh, tea or coffee on the board. Aha, very interesting, Amruta. Maybe that's uh, uh, some sign yeah, that he, that he wants relaxed. to fight today. Anyway, he fights every time. Castles yeah. by Gyu and Thai Dai Wan, Bishop E7. And, and what uh, Thai Dai Wan has done here is very logical. He simply developed all his pieces, but Gukesh is telling him that, look, if you don't do something drastic right now, then I have more space and I have actually come out of the opening pretty well. So you need to make use of the fact that these pieces are still undeveloped. How do you do it here is the question actually. And that is what Thai Dai Wan has been thinking, you know, should, what is the way in uh, which Sagar, one more thing after Bishop E7, we have SL Narayanan who has played this. Uh -huh. Once and Niels Grandelius as well has so played black this. players, some good players Hamilton have gone for also. this. Yes, and black has mm. ha had a good result, in fact. You know, I, I kind of get the point behind it. You know, there's this line, let's just uh, show it to our viewers here. Imagine I go knight f6, d3, okay, bishop e7, <clears throat> e3, knight comes here, I take, you take, I play rook e1, you castle. I play a3, you play a5 to stop b4, and now I go knight e5. Generally, I, 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 not this move order, but generally this is a great plan, you know, for white. Because now this bishop opens up, the rook is kind of well placed. Sometimes it swings over to b5 and puts pressure here. So what Gukesh has essentially done by bringing his knight here is that in case of any time, like here, you take, I take, <laughs> 95, he's like, okay, thank you. I'm going to take, take, and now my other knight comes in. Ah, that's a very deep point. Uh, that would be a terrible thing to do as white to sort of get the knight out from no, there. No, but that is what black is actually stopping white from. Mm. Now we know Gukesh's idea. Yes, and also e5 square is very important. So maybe Gukesh wants his other knight to come here and control that square even more. So this is the plan, guys. and. Gyu and Thai Dai Wan has to figure out what to do. My thought is somewhere he has to go for this knight a3, knight c2 ideas, trying for b4 break at the right time. And this is a typical way to play such positions. Uh, but we can say that this is an interesting opening position. Let's go to the last game that yeah. we have. By the way, Gyu and Thai is 22 years old. Ah, 22. Okay. Bartel versus Rapport. Bartel lost yesterday his game against Parham. It was a very smooth play by Parham, absolutely not uh, giving his opponent any chance. Today, Bartel is playing against uh, Rapport. And you know, I was talking to Matthews on the uh, opening ceremony. And I told him, you know, congratulations, you won the challengers last year. Now you're coming here to play the Masters. I'm excited. And he said, no, the organizers played a really bad joke on me. You know, he's funny. Yeah? Uh, and I said, what happened? He's like, first they tell me somewhere in August or September that Pragnananda is playing. I'm like, okay, the tournament looks strong. Fine, Prag is there. Then they tell me Vidit is there. <laughs> then they tell me Gukesh is playing. Then they tell me Nodirbek is there, Vincent. What is this? You know, this, <laughs> is the, <laughs> this is the strongest event I'm going to play in my life. Oh my God. And you can kind of get a sense that for Bartel, uh, who is now 38 years old, mm -hmm. this is kind of a huge challenge in his career. Uh, he's 26, 60. He's on the rise, in fact. He was 26, 20 or something at the mid-2023. mid, mid And he's gained 40 ELO points. He's in his best phase, perhaps. But this is a tough tournament for him. Now he's facing Richard Rapport here. Uh, it was the Italian, which we see almost every single round in these top tournaments. And he goes h6. Bartel likes to play some, you know, offbeat stuff. But this is not totally offbeat. It's played often. The idea often is to go g5. Uh, if a beginner played this move, mm -hmm. I would tell them, 
don't move your rook pawns in the opening why are you afraid of threats like knight g5 you know it's not a big deal but when a super gm plays it you you know that he is doing it for a reason i Castles. think that's it about the elite uh, level right they have the knights at the edge of the board they don't really sometimes care about the king all of it breaking the rules they they know when to break the rules that's true and so here a4 played bishop comes out knight c3 a5 rook comes here so rapport playing it calmly castles h3 now this one very very stable game and he plays his knight to d5 hmm okay interesting you can take here bishop takes but Bartel goes knight to b4 and he is trying to actually fight against this d5 stronghold that white has he took the knight bishop takes and now he took the bishop i think rapport has, is on to something yeah he takes here c3 knight c6 and now the question is what should white do here and why is this structure good for white i mean for me the point is the rook is open here but generally you have a knight on f6 so you go knight h5 knight f4 try to create play but now that knight doesn't exist but he can shift the c6 knight right in knight e7 knight g6 knight oh, f4 oh nice smart yeah that looks like a great plan yeah and it's it's you can't stop that in a way so here's my question to our viewers yeah i like to pose them queen b3 i really like this move Ooh, double because, attack because it's a double attack i am attacking this pawn and this pawn what should black play here it's a typical response to such a move you can't save i mean you can save both with a move like queen c8 hmm. but it looks a little passive you know you're not connecting your rooks so here's the trick which everyone should remember you go queen d7 and you connect your rooks but then when this this pawn is snatched clearly big it's terrible blunder. yes it's a big blunder yes white black to play i'm sure many of you know the move here but still for anyone who wants to try it out black to play and when the bar just simply fell right there also very nice thing just uh, nothing related with the movement hmm. but uh, the chat also the live chat is trying to answer all the questions which you were asking 15 minutes delay yeah yes. so that is yes. a good thing they can answer they can well we think, we, we do this a lot matter. online but it's our privilege that we have people in front of us so uh, thank you so much for being here and answering few of our questions it's great fun for us to commentate with all of you being here so thank you uh but black plays a very simple move the queen is trapped yes would you like to try mm, yes brilliant rook f b8 this rook to b8 the queen can no longer escape and it's trapped completely there so i think rapport is not going for that of course he's he's played this more from a long term perspective that he prefers this structure uh where his all his pawns are undoubled to the black doubled pawns but at the same time bartel is happy that his rook has an open f file it's a nice strategic fight wow and sagar it's 4 pm and do you remember something yes uh, the voting i mean yes. we are 2 minutes late actually the voting yes. Uh, guys we have pinned a message this is more for our online viewers we have pinned a message on our chat uh, on our live stream if you go to pragchessfestival.com/voting you can vote for the best game of the day every day and this is brought to you by one of the sponsors of this event which is Karel Janecek and he has this website called decision 21 and there you can actually make a voting for the best game that you feel for today of course 4 pm is too early because <laughs> the games are just heating up but okay, let's, uh, let's say yeah. until now what was your opening of the day was that the oh, same opening. question no you i was going to ask? say which game will turn into the game of the day today ah so i was asking more about a fact which you can answer you mm. were asking more about the prediction i i is. think uh, the opening of the day hmm 
Maybe well, we can have all the five boats. Uh, yes, that's a would great that thing. Would that be possible? Oh, and there, then it also gets also, a round up. And we can also have... Yeah, on the bottom right, you can see, vote for your favorite game with decision 21, pragchessfestival.com slash voting. Okay, if you guys want to also vote at some point, let's have the five boards here and see which one. So, I feel personally, Amrita, from the opening perspective, I like Gukesh's strategy because this is something I had never seen before. It was new for me. So, I like that. Uh, I think with its game is... Uh, I don't ah, know how to put it. By the way, he took, he took with the B-pawn, yes. I thought D takes C3 was more logical. But and by the way, David's move, we guessed it right. Knight G3 has been played. I think David's game is not particularly that exciting from the opening perspective. But, but will get will heat yeah, up. Yeah. I think it will heat up. I, I think Pragnanda versus Maksudlu opening, I really find that interesting. And that can convert into some craziness as well. Yeah. So maybe between Maksud Luk Prague and uh, Gukesh Guen. Gukesh Guen uh, Gukesh, yes. yeah. The opening part, yeah. But we will see for the middle game part. Yeah, let's go. I think I'm very interested to see the game between uh, Maksud Luk and Pragnananda. Let's go to that game. Mm -hmm. Today we have like a few of the cameras in this sort of position, yeah. Like a little Anti? tilted. <laughs> it feels <laughs> like, you know. Uh, they are all a little bit but like maybe we can change, get it cha slightly uh, equal what to say yes Amruta, you can you can watch it like this like no no <laughs> it would be able to he would be able to adjust later ah I'm producer sure. sab yes of course uh, he's been running around today like never before <laughs> he has five streams to manage <laughs> he's going there handling so many things that's i am tadia scribble here who is just doing a phenomenal job producing multiple streams uh, from the venue and uh, a big thanks to him. So, knight comes to c3 as we guessed. Mm -hmm. Parham attacking the central pawn on d5. Prag immediately snatching the pawn. Parham takes it back. And now comes knight to b6 hitting that bishop. You don't want to be giving up your bishop. So, Parham comes back here. And now, Prag plays a slightly weird move which is a5. Actually, it's very natural move, Sagar. Really? That's what I thought. I mean, the first instinct goes for a5 with the queen on b3, knight on b6. I would, I would rather put my bishop on, I mean, I would put it here or here and complete my development. But you're right. I mean, when the queen is on b3, you want to kick it away with a4, correct? Yeah, and you have a wonderful bishop on f5. Let's mm. not forget that. Oh, I have a nice question, Amruta. If you play a3, I will judge if the question is not. <laughs> <laughs> why is why is a4 a mistake? Actually, it is not. But I thought it's a mistake. I'm a bit surprised. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I thought. Knight a4, knight a4, and bishop b5 check. Exactly, right? exactly. But it's a blunder. <gasps> you see it. You oh. see it. So we thought that this would be a mistake because of take, take, and check. And then you lose this, but unfortunately, you it's lose like your bishop. It's like a prank. Bishop. Yeah, it's like a prank. You fall in a trap. Black to play? Of course, Agar. Everybody knows it with their expression, you can see. <laughs> yes. What's the question? B5, of course. Yes, B5 traps the bishop here. Fantastic. The bishop uh, is gone. So this does not work. But actually, <coughs> there was even a more um, clinical way which was queen a5 so you know lasker used to say <coughs> when you look at a good move uh, sorry when you find a good move look for a better one but i thought i looked at b5 when i thought that's a good move <laughs> exactly <laughs> then look for a better one queen a5 ah but what if i would have looked at queen a5 first uh, yes that's <laughs> true that's true that's the best it's always motto. tricky because then you don't we, give we up use a the pawn. quotes in a way which you know we find it convenient true true so here um, you cannot do this. So I, I believe Prague might even push his pawn forward because this is the live board we have right now with a3 played. And Prague might push his pawn to a4. And then the queen has to move. But there could be something else also here that Prague can do which is to simply bring his bishop out. Let's wait for Prague to make his move. How about 
we go to the next one by the way it's a very big uh, running joke right now mm -hmm. that how does this little boy 18 year old have an entire tournament dedicated to him <laughs> prag masters prag masters <laughs> but actually uh, of course we call him prag while uh, this is the prag masters so there's a little bit and of a difference and i also sometimes call him prag prag yes so yeah but it's nice it does sound so similar yeah by the way, in the background, you will see a few people uh, who are watching the action live. But also there are top boards of the open section. And some of the streamers who are here get a spot in the main playing hall to play. So they are all playing there. It's a, it's a very vibrant tournament hall. There's the challenger section. There's the future section. There's the master's section, the top boards, also the main sponsor of this event, uh, Roman, who's the founder of Novi Bor uh, team, um, the club, is also playing there. So, a lot of nice things happening. If you are in and around Prague, come here, join us for the commentary. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. Okay, Amruta, going to yes. Vidit versus Nodirbek Abdu Satarov. I was a bit surprised that actually... B takes C3 was taken by Vidit um, somewhere. I did feel that he would take with the D pawn. But I think, Amruta, what Vidit has realized is that when this happens, he has much better chances of playing for a win here than with this structure, which is after knight C3, D C3. And he felt that maybe this was more drawish in nature. That's the reason he kept the imbalance uh, by much taking with the B imbalance. pawn. Yeah, and and I, I kind of now understand his point, but uh, also also he will be able to create a passer maybe much better chances in this structure. Yeah. Than the other one, but still you are making that A pawn isolated. I I agree, I agree. I this know. can become a weakness in future, but it can also create a lot of pressure if I push my pawn and bring my rook here to bear down there. One one thing that I was thinking about Amruta is how would this decision be to take the knight with my bishop looks terrible. Going into opposite way. colored yes. bishop. Yeah, yes. I'm very happy because I have rooks on the board. You mean as white you are very happy. yeah? Yes, mm. because I'm a pawn up. I have rooks on the board so that I mean for sure, the pressure will be too much on black. I agree. I agree. And Nodirbek uh, yesterday did win an opposite colored bishop endgame ah. being pawn up. And so yeah. today he will not certainly go into such a position. Yeah, he's not so going quickly. to underestimate this at all. He goes for a check. And now, actually, Vidit has been he thinking uh, whether he should play his pawn to f3 or should he maybe move his king away. But one second, if you go king d3, which looks very nice for a moment. Oh, look at the king, Amruta. <laughs> then there is bishop d4, I guess. Not bishop d4. Because we have we have some people here joining in. Black to play. What was the move that you would play here? Very, like, don't give up your bishop. Ah, that, no, I thought tactically it was working. But of course, otherwise the move uh, is ah, very natural. You wanted natural. to take, take and play bishop f5. Yep. Yes. But then I have king c3, no? So Amruta wanted to do this, this, check. Yeah, if you take with the pawn, then there is king c3, correct. Mm. Mm. But here's the question for you. What would you play here as black? Black to move. Make use of the fact that the black, white pieces are completely um, not developed. Exactly. Not you, a simple you can move. can shout out the move if you know it. Oh. Yeah. Wonderful. Long castle is an excellent move. What What is your rating? Mm, but you're doing you're amazing. Rating. This is fantastic. Uh, and a great move. Pinning the knight there. Threatening now bishop f5 check. Because the knight can no longer take it. And this would be a terrible position for, for white. You know, to be in after yeah, being a pawn. Yeah, king up. on d3 is very lonely. Yeah, very much. So, Amruta, right now, with it, very likely then. to play f3. We are uh, getting, right now, the footage of Prague versus Maksud Lu. So, let's go back to that game. Because, sure. 
C6 played by Prague. He did not. He did not play. Uh, develop his bishop yet. Nor did he play the move A4, which we were thinking. But C6 is very logical. It gives me this feeling of slow defense. You know, somehow ah, this. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Also, what Prague wants to do is he wants to put his knight maybe in the center of the board with these two pawns. Which knight, by the way? I mean, I would love to put this knight, but I'm a bit worried about my pawn falling. So later, after a4, you always have the mm. choice. Oh, yeah? that's a great that's... point. Oh, that's a wonderful point. I can play a4, move the queen back, and then bring my knight either one. Yeah, hey, but he played. I think because Prague's Prague has pressed the clock. What yeah. did he play? C6. He played c6. Mm -hmm. So Parham, if he goes knight f3, which is the most natural move to bring his knight out. Suddenly, it doesn't feel that great. Yeah, like a4, queen here, and now knight d5. And this is exactly what uh, black wants. Uh, can't really go and snatch this pawn, which looks nice, but then you lose. Queen uh, a5, yeah, same it, idea. Taking here could be one, but as you pointed out, queen a5, much stronger, attacking the knight, and also this one. So no, but if knight bd5, just a moment. Yeah. If I do short castle with the idea of knight a4. But Amruta, you lose your bishop here. Ah, knight Are you a4, okay? e4. No, I don't no. like that structure here. Although sometimes they do play with this structure. But it's not always this. against this bishop on c8. If the bishop is on c8, you like this structure because then e5 break is very difficult to get and the bishop is passive. But when your bishop is already out. Yeah, it's just a gift for yeah, black. It's, yeah, not, that it's bishop. not that great. Okay, so we will come back to this game. Parham uh, looking a bit sort of relaxed there. He's trying to think, having a sip of water. 55 minutes for Prague, one hour, two minutes for Parham. Let's go to the game of Vincent versus... Oh, by the way, can we have a quick look at Vidit versus Abdul Sataro's video? Because we did look at the game, but we... Ah, yeah, there we have it. And there... You can see bishop g4 and it's very clear to us that Vidit should push his pawn up f3. But somehow Vidit is not making that move. Can you explain to me why? Yeah, then he is definitely thinking of something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. What else do you expect me to answer, Sagar? <laughs> no, maybe king f1? I don't like it. Yeah, king f1, somehow it feels like you are disconnecting your rook, right, which is on h1. And what a nice view from the other end. We have with it there thinking. Both of them have 59 minutes each, by the way. It's oh. equal time. Yesterday we saw a lot of time gap. Today, in the second round, players are trying to be closer True. in time control. True. Okay, so we will come back here with this thinking, I believe, even whatever time he thinks, f3 is the move he will be playing. How about going to Navara versus Kaimer? And yeah, you know, the whatever we guessed is happening in this game because they are following the game of Levon Aronian. You think so? Oh, no, they no, no, would no. Be, I don't There think. is a small, small uh, additional moves that have happened here. So we were looking at this position and then we saw that the knight should come here to g3 but actually instead of that david first played his bishop here attacked vincent's knight vincent played his knight back and now david put his knight to g3 and pawn has come to b4 so this is the position we are looking at now so bishop bishop d2 was played let's say He's not played his move, but Amruta, there is a difference now. Ah, because earlier, yeah. the knight here was putting pressure on c3 pawn. Now, there is no such pressure. Mm. So, the question is, what should white do here? Uh, you can play what Amruta suggests, bishop d2. Nice little move, calm move. But there could be also some other way to play this position. I like, I like this idea of putting my knight in the center of the board, knight e4. Sort of making you decide. Do you want to take it? Because if you take, I improve my structure a bit as well. Oh, white. with the pawn. And then you, yeah. you're saying that you are not interested in putting more pressure no, on e5. No, but I, I have a beautiful bishop here, which is what I'm, I want to play but for. But how do you plan to put pressure on f7? 
yeah it's also not such so much yeah you can also neutralize it with your bishop to e6 yes e6. i don't like d4 mm. maybe you don't like knight e4 at all then. yes i don't like knight e4 okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> david come on make that move okay yeah. but knight e4 maybe not uh, then what else bishop no, so b2 we, uh, if we try aronian's idea of rook a4 at this moment it doesn't make sense right because the b pawn is very yeah. beautifully protected Yes, and Aronian had swung his rook to the side, uh, to the other side, but here mm, it's not it's working not out. Working. Okay, this is Bishop D two is hmm. nice. Even I like Bishop C four, just moving it away from that diagonal at some point, making a square for the queen on B three, if at all. Yeah, makes makes some sense for sure. Bishop C four is a good idea. Also, bishop e3 might be possible. So there are all these possible. Uh, you know, you know, it's hard to again consider a move like bishop e3 because just visually it feels like e5 is a is a like let's say there are the kids there playing. You don't want to leave them alone when there is a knife around, when there are dangerous things. You want to look at them. Hmm. So that e5 pawn, it seems like you want to look at them, look at it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> So let's see what uh, David comes up with. Maybe he can uh, attack uh, some way. Yeah, but he's definitely going to need some time. By the way, he's having one hour ten minutes. Yeah. Quite a lot of lot more time than Vincent today. Vincent twenty minutes down uh, in comparison to David. Right. Let's uh, see what Richard Rapport has done because this guy is a very very creative player. And you know what he did, Amruta, where the move where we were looking at going queen b3 and all, he has pushed his pawn to b4. And and isn't this a free pawn? He has actually given a free pawn, but clearly after take, take, it's getting knight it. Knight takes. Now queen b3 for sure. Yes, queen b3 attacking the knight and the pawn. And now, if as black, I'm just wondering, okay, I go c5. Five. Yeah. Sort of solidifying my yeah. knight there. You take this pawn because then you don't want to be pawned down. I go king h8. Now I'm threatening this pawn. I'm threatening knight c2. Actually, this looks really good for black. Totally. You're right. So maybe Richard. And the queen on e6 is not even so active. Because yeah. Because it needs some more pieces with it. So what Richard has actually thought of here, uh, I'm not sure. But maybe now I realize what he wants to do is not snatch that. Oh, look at that. Bartel is going for it. He's like, Richard, I'm calling your bluff. If it is a bluff, maybe it's a good move. We don't know. The bar says it's still equal. Okay, I, I predict a rapport to come back. Simply take the pawn very quickly. A, B. There he comes. Sits down. Writes the move. And takes back without much thought. So CB4. And now will Matthius take the pawn instantly? Because you know Amruta, when you say A, you have to say B. Otherwise next move B5 is coming in. And you will be not in a good situation, so you must take the pawn. Yeah, knight before obvious. Yes. Yes. So no. You take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. By and the way, after A, I can also say C. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can do whatever Especially you want. Especially when it's very, very hot in Mumbai. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh. Nice oh, you one. didn't really understand nice. the joke. Nice. Mm -hmm. Here then you why did you laugh? It. Here you don't need it. No, I just <laughs> thought you said I can break the rules. Uh, but knight b4, <laughs> queen b3, attacking the knight and the pawn. And the point which uh, I think is what Richard wants to go for After is c5. c5, play the move bishop d2. And he wants to take here and he wants to say that my knight better than your uh, bishop here on f6. This is what he's aiming for and I believe that if you have to go back then I can take and already I think white's position looks okay. Like it's not bad. Nine, 
uh, you can go rook from e1 to b1 put pressure here you may have this pawn to put pressure so looks okay absolutely so the question is for bishop d2 black may not like to go back is there any other way he can continue no but like i think you queen have a to right five then maybe but, but if you go queen a5 ah d6 is weak so queen e6 uh, yeah, check take this and, and then queen d6 exactly and then you don't have knight c2 because of the pin yes, on exactly. bishop so on let, let me just make the moves here i take this and now the knight cannot move because the bishop attacks the queen so this way i think uh, bartel has some decision to make he has did he play he played what Has he played B five? B five? Whoa! What a move this is. But then doesn't it allow A five? No, but A five. Oh, he will just take it. B four. Knight B four, yeah. Yeah. If you push your pawn. No, but queen B. That's I, fine. No, but then you have like a superior version completely, right? After C five, like now I will even attack your pawn here. Hmm. So then B five is very interesting. No, what I'm Bartel has found on the board? Actually, yeah, it's a very interesting. Like, what first thing is? What if I take? Oh, uh, sorry. Knight B four. Take is hanging. Yeah, sorry. B five you cannot take. Wow, it's a practically great move. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Rapport looks at him and, with his expression, I think Rapport has not considered this. He is going to need some time. He takes the knight in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Amruta, I have a feeling that he will play queen b3 because then you are defending your pawn and also attacking e6. And let's and see. And if, if b you... takes a4 now, then I take here. But uh, rook a4, ah, queen e6 check. Yes. Not rook a4. King h8. Yeah. <clears throat> and I push your knight away. Now knight b4. Does it make any sense? Yeah, but I mean. Blunder. Wait a second. What is the big blunder? Oh, the knight is trapped. How? Uh, now we need to. Oh, queen. Why to play? Oh. Yes, fantastic job, Amruta. Queen comes back and the knight is gone. Here you have to play play c5, and then I can take here and I win a pawn, very crucial pawn, and I'm completely winning. So yeah, uh, I think uh, b5, although very creative. Gives White a good advantage if White if Rapport is able to find the move Queen B3 or Bishop D2 and also the move A5 looks all are very interesting actually to play. So we'll see what yeah. Richard Ra does. Rapport is definitely going to have fun in calculating this position, but this is going towards a, you know very dynamic uh, situation. Yes, coming to Gukesh versus Guan Thai Dai Wan. So we left it here, the reversed Benoni position. Mm -hmm. Then it so happened that after uh, castles, Thai Dai Wan went knight a3, and this is what we were talking. The knight has to be developed from a3 to c2, so that later on you go for b4. Straightforward plan. Oh, but Gukesh took here, and I'm a bit surprised with Gukesh's decision because he had other ways to keep his center control. He could have played e5. Which was one move. He could have played f6 with the idea of e5. So there were all these possibilities, but Gukesh simply took. But I do find this move very interesting because if you take with the piece, then the d4 square is very weak. You are absolutely right. That's what happened. Yeah, and also the d3 pawn is a backward pawn there. So black somewhere a Sicilian like you know reverse thing. D5 square is usually weak. That way, but the compensating factor is that black is way behind in development, and white has all his pieces out. So after Gukesh plays, you know Gukesh plays uncompromising chess. He plays his pawn to e5, and he tells uh, Guan Thai Dai Wan that look, if I can get, uh, get bishop out, knight out. You are positionally in trouble because you have a backward pawn and a weakness. Yeah, and the d3 pawn is a permanent uh, weakness. Yeah, right yeah. now it's very permanent. You can't think of d4 for long, long, long time. <laughs> But on the other hand, Amruta, Guan Thai Dai Wan says I go queen b3, and he played this move, uh -huh. and I'm actually 
Is this the current position? Uh, yes, no. Now Gukesh's next move was epic. Actually, I wait, can, wait. Uh, I have not seen it, so yeah. I might be able to think of it. But because because you know one of the things I really want to do as black F5. is play b6 bishop b7, put the bishop on that diagonal. But clearly, it loses to knight takes pawn. Yeah, with your bishop on g2. Uh, I don't think I'm your friend, yeah? Yeah. Black is not your friend. So F5, I really like it because the idea is to kick what? the bishop on F3 away with the idea of F4. <laughs> Amruta, do you not care for any development which is, you know, all your pieces are here. You still want to go F5, huh? Because I thought there is a pawn on C4, there's no danger on the diagonal and F4, how do you stop it? That's what was it's very forcing for me. not a bad idea, but then me. again, F4 is not the end of the day. I can just reroute my bishop here from here. Got uh, it. So F5 is know, a bad move. You know, not a bad move. It's, it's fine. But the move that was played here by Gukesh is Knight A6. Oh, wow. I would not have guessed this. And, very and somewhere, I feel that Gukesh wants to bring his knight to b4, bearing down on the d3 square, mm. get his bishop out to f5, and then just tell white, what is it that you got out of the opening? You are completely in trouble. Also, Sagar, few questions. One is that the knight wants to go to b4, yes. but the knight could also think of knight c7, knight e6. Definitely. Would you prefer attacking the d3 guy or would you prefer taking a knight to d4? I'm just, just going to play it by the position on what he plays. Like if white goes knight c2 here, I may then change my mind and go for knight c7 idea which you said, right? But if you don't you do don't that... You definitely don't want to exchange no, one knight. No, I don't want to. In fact, Amruta, my plan is simple. I want to put my pawn here. I maybe want to tuck my king away. I want to get my bishop out. I want to bring my queen up. I get my knight yeah, here. Yeah. It's actually flowing, Or maybe right? queen on c7, rook, double or... Yeah, with that one pawn target, mm. you, you just know what to do around it. And Thaidai one would not be happy because he's playing with the white pieces and within 11 moves he's caught into a position that looks very pleasant for Gukesh. Absolutely. Oh, another question which is a little bit of a past Sagar, uh, not not ancient times but two three moves back. <laughs> Why did uh, like one could he have played with the f pawn f takes e3 and said that i want to have some control on the d4 square yes i always felt that you know not d takes <coughs> e3 because of f takes e3 so what was i missing here you know it would have been very good amruta but then when you play rookie one suddenly this f e3 move makes a little mm. less sense right because you e4 wanted your ideas. rook there yes and then so, the e4 ideas will also be there somewhere in the air i i think Bishop takes was fine, but maybe what he, uh, his move, queen b3, uh, I think he didn't anticipate Gukesh's move, knight a6. Yeah, knight a6 was a, like out of the blue. Beautiful move. And uh, you know, Amruta, I'm going to make a small sort of a guess today. You know, we have this voting, right? Prakchessfestival.com slash voting for oh, the yes. best game of the day. Yes. I'm going to actually make a guess that I think this is going to be the best game of the day. Ah, you're predicting already, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys. By the way, over there, vote for your favorite game with Decision21, prakchessfestival.com slash voting. Yes, because I, I do get this sense that Gukesh has got this. You know, like right from the opening, a slightly better position. He's feeling confident. He has more time on his clock than his opponent. He has played this unconventional opening and his plans look very obvious, like what he has to do next. Okay. So we'll so, come back. Yes, because you know Van Gogh his rating is 2630. Gukesh's rating current one is 2743. The published. Uh, 2747 if I'm one not mistaken. Second. Yeah, published maybe 2743. Published 2743. But, but no, I think it's 2747. Uh, the, the rating. Maybe they have. have the ratings when they accepted the yeah. entries or something like that. Yeah, you are looking and at it at, on the official side. But right yeah. now Gukesh and is at... And five years difference. He is 22, Gukesh is 17. Very interesting game. Yes. Okay. So, we'll come back to Gukesh. Let's go quickly to the game of uh, Richard, Richard Rapport and Mateusz Bartel. 
So what yeah, happened was, was he played bishop d2 here. He defended this pawn, and now after pawn takes pawn, we have uh, Bartel who is thinking now. Uh, sorry, uh, Rapport who is thinking rook takes a4 very Vidit likely. Also watching the game. Yes, with it looking there, <laughs> and maybe that's a sign for us to go to with its game. With it versus Nodirbek Abdu Satarov. We left it at this point. There was a check. With it did go. Bishop uh, a pawn to f3. Bishop went back. He played his pawn up. Uh, there was long castling. Then the bishop came in. He brought his rook to the center of the board. And now this was the last move that was played. So with it comes back to his board, settles down. What do you prefer, Amruta? Extra pawn? Or the double bishop. Extra pawn. Extra pawn. Yes. Why? You were never so materialistic better. in life, yeah? No, no. But with it is playing, no, <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's like it's not my game. <laughs> yeah, I agree. With it is enjoy enjoying himself, you know. He, he can handle his... material better, you know. Yes. Can, I'm like a forgetful person. I lose uh, things here and there, so I, I think with it is responsible. So, He'll take care of that pawn. <laughs> <laughs> Vidit is basically telling to uh, Nodirbek, prepare for a long grind, you know. Which Nodirbek literally Nodirbek loves is it. like ready. He's, but you know, he loves it from the other side to grind his opponent. You never are happy when you are a pawn down where you have to play. But yeah, this will be a testing if game for Vidit Nodirbek. will play like yesterday for five and a half hours and Nodirbek is always ready to yeah. go for a long game. Then we might be looking at maybe a... Full night of commentary. <laughs> oh, Amrita already a bit bit scared now. Within within the nightmare of every commentator <laughs> wanting to play and long arbiters. games. Oh my god. Okay, but this is going to be an epic end game. That is for sure. Yes. I, I, we are actually very, very happy. We've stocked up. We had one of the uh, one of our viewers uh, who came in and gave us some food uh, before the round. So, you know, we are ready with uh, our stock of food, chocolates, <laughs> everything. And we, Where for is the, the chocolate? You want? You have it? Yes, yes. Mm. We, there are some Amruta very nice Czech kind of chocolates. So, mm, you know. Wow. Uh, with almond, Amazing. Almonds and covered with chocolates and so on. So yeah, lovely. Uh, wow. Okay, so shall Amruta, we? Amruta, you didn't even offer me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, uh, <laughs> she put it away. She's like, okay, I had my share. You know, it shouldn't come in the camera. I know, like we created yeah. it. And <laughs> I get it. I get it. By the way, Nodirbek <laughs> has now gone rookie seven, and and very very logical. No chess. Uh, he wants to sorry king d two, rookie seven. He wants to sort of double down the e-file. The engines do not like it. And actually, they do not like it for a very specific reason. Maybe we can ask uh, our viewers here, what is it that white can play in this position that engines do not prefer? But... No, no, I'm, I didn't get your question. White right. should what should... What is white's best move here? Beautiful, fantastic, knight f5. And you know, one of the things that Vidit wants to do is wow. get rid of one of the bishops. Wow. And which he That's was not able really to do really it. A good move. But knight f5, he's attacking the rook. And let's say Bishop if you C5. take this, this will be like a terrible endgame. Now, this is a lost endgame in a way. You yeah, are now you're just a pawn up. Yeah, the double bishop advantage is gone. The correct. compensation is gone. But on the other hand, if you take bishops f, bishop f5, bishop c5, this we are discussing that this opposite colored bishop endgame will be quite a difficult one to hold. Yeah, like with it can keep on grinding. The bishop pair advantage is gone. Isn't it funny that Nodarbek yesterday played with the opposite colored bishop and was grinding and today he is on the defending side. Yes. And sometimes with that, psychologically, you feel even more, uh, you know, overestimate your opponent's position because you are the better one and you know how you can convert. So, could be very much so. And Amruta, here, I'm very curious to see if Vidit 
goes for this suggestion which one of our viewers has given here knight f5 will he do that or will with it feel maybe it's not the time right now to go for opposite colored position i should just maybe improve my rook rook b1 should i improve my pawn position h4 should i go a4 gain some space there are too many possibilities here and they are all good yeah rook b1 and h4 or knight f5 is the best one Knight f5 is definitely what so the if you say that prefer. this is the situation that that one choice can change your life not, the one not choice yet. can change it, the it's game. not it's not like a life changing one it's just a sl small upgrade and i don't even know if vidit wants it because in a way you are improving your advantage but on the other hand you are clarifying it for abdu satarov saying that now it's just opposite colored bishops while when you have this it could be knight versus bishop it could be something else it yeah. could be a rook and game so i, I don't know so with it the assessment of the opposite colored bishop is very critical yes. to make the move knight f5 yes by the way in the background you can see two indian talented ims watching it the i am jacket. hari krishnan and i am ilam parthi and which is very cool because generally you can't get to play in tournaments where you can see the world class players playing like open events you play open events or uh, in the world class events only top players are invited but that's the beauty of the prague international chess festival here everyone is invited there are players playing in the open section there are uh, you know events in the morning where you will see youngsters young kids coming in fact to, uh, tomorrow is uh, uh, like for the school kids there is something happening here then there are all these oh and today also there was vishi anand's lecture for yes. the futures which yes. was very nice so so all of this makes this uh, a beautiful event to come to so if you guys ever are wanting to come to an event i highly recommend the prague international chess festival because here you get the full experience you get to see top players in action you can yourself play there is this nice environment and prague as a city and exactly that's so such nice. an icing on the cake yeah amruta that is just true that is true okay sagar uh, just guess with its next move uh, if okay. you are able to guess you get a chocolate <laughs> <laughs> oh hard for that sagar <laughs> you don't like this what you are doing with me. <laughs> you are making me work for it mm. okay if i know with it well and i'm trying to guess his body language now <clears throat> i feel he won't go for knight f5 because it's kind of committing like the old with it wouldn't do it but now the new with it you know the the with it 2.0 as we've been talking about he might go knight f5 okay let me take this risk and say he will play knight f5 because look at him he knows that knight f5 is in the air so i believe he'll go knight f5 with it please play it so that i can get a chocolate here <laughs> okay going to david navara's game because this is the game where we left off with the move b4 and vincent had just pushed his pawn david went Did he go knight e4 or no? Ruta? I think that would be no. your analysis. He went bishop d2. He just played his bishop, which was the move you had recommended. Bishop came out for Vincent. Knight went to h4. h4. Oh, very different plan. Wow. And I like it actually. I love it, Amruta. I love it. Look at what has happened now. With this, he's opened up his queen. His knights are looking at the f5 square. The bishop is here. Okay, take care of your bishop. Yeah, it's slightly loose. but if he can drop his bishop back white would have four pieces in the attack or maybe even five yes the only problem is that rook on b8 can enter on b2 yes so you have to be careful about that also how do you progress now with white as you said i love like there are these two knights eyeing on the king side the bishop on b3 the bishop on d2 also eyeing on that six if you could make the arrow sagar ah sorry yes <laughs> Were you thinking about the chocolate? No, I was thinking about <laughs> what will Vincent play here. That is my thought here as black and I think I have found a great move. Maybe we can ask our viewers here again what would black play to neutralize white? Queen c8. Queen c8 with the idea of Control stopping f5. f5. Yes, maybe, but you know this bishop here is what bishop I am e6. a little bit Bishop e6. Yes. You want to go? I want to just play this so that once these bishops are traded, 
let's say I can. I, I won't trade, by the way. You may go bishop c2. Yes. Possible. But I take here. And now, even knight if your knight comes in and sits here without this powerhouse on b3, it feels a little bit that the attack won't go through. So I, I do feel, and also Amruta, I unleash the attack on the d3 pawn with my queen. Mm. So I do like this move, bishop e6 for Vincent. Uh, but you never know, yeah, uh, what he might do. So tell me if bishop e6, yeah. and now you go bishop c2. Or, or bishop a4, Amruta, how about that? Ah, that's better. Even that's better, better, right? Because it's giving a threat. Yes, maybe that's the move. You don't take it. You bishop. play bishop a4, then I have to drop my bishop back and suddenly... Oh, the actually, can they repeat? No, 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 not repeat. Why? David can go knight h5, then he can go queen f3. He can be the one who starts pressing here with his bishop looking here. Oops, bishop looking here, knight looking here. Yeah, I, I always felt some stress when there was such a bishop and the g7 h6 pawn structure. Yes. So knight and bishop, all the time, even if the sack was not working at that moment, Every move, I had to keep calculating it. Agreed. And uh, guys, don't be uh, fooled by this bar here, which is very, very equal. You know, it's just showing that the position is very, very even. But I get this feeling that it's boiling. And Vincent's time, 38 minutes. He is going down on time. He's 24 minutes down. David has one hour, two minutes. So critical moment coming up in this battle. Should we go to Pragnananda versus Maksudlu? Yes, let's go there. Pragnananda versus Maksudlu, the two uh, guys who had won yesterday. So what happened here, Amruta, is that after c6, Parham went with his bishop to g5. How does Parham come up with these moves? <laughs> he, he just played his bishop, moved it again, but I get it. He, he was not happy with his bishop on this square where it was constantly getting hit by the knights. Yeah, but this is something very amazing, Sagar, sometimes about the top players yeah. that they are able to move that. P like for us, we might feel that, oh, I moving the bishop to g5, it's so embarrassing. I brought it on f4 again. <laughs> True. You know, that, True. like rook e1, rook f1, those kind of ideas there. So it's a great move. More than the move, great thought. Yeah, it's a like you are able to rectify. You are flexible. You are also threatening to maybe take when the queen cannot take because the knight would be hanging. So you want to maybe double up those pawns. So Prague goes bishop e7. And now, you know, any normal sort of a player who, who is just beginning his chess journey would put his knight out on f3 and say, I'll finish my development. But yes. Parham. No? no? Parham is no. no. Parham is special. He goes f3. What a move. What, you know, this guy always wants to create mess and I can tell you he is going for either e4, either g4, h4, you know this kind of play. He will put his knight on h3 later then bring it to f2. That's what, that's why people say Parham doesn't need an invitation to kind of play an aggressive game. He just comes uninvited. He will play f3. Like this is uninvited uh, mess that he's creating on the board f3 and I, I think it can go it can backfire in a big way absolutely I, firstly I don't think Prague would be expecting such a move yeah also uh, very interesting about Prague is that he kept that a5 pawn mm. on a5 keeping that threat is better than execution now, but now he can play a4 I think he will do it now because somehow I do feel this queen is beautifully positioned keeping pressure here so if I can push it away tell me something hmm. if did he play a4? No. I think he will. No, no. Uh, tell me something. If black simply plays castle for a moment, just think of a simple idea like castle. Okay. Now is Maksudlu planning to go g4 or e4 or anything else? I feel like if I go g4, hmm? it's a bit too much because after bishop g6, <laughs> h4, h4 um, you... I, I mean, black's moves are very simple uh, somehow, and white is not very well developed. So I don't know, like it looks f4 and all. Okay, but this evaluation bar definitely doesn't like. He says it's too no, much. It's too much. We so will go e4 back and not be the in. better move. Mm -hmm. And then I go bishop g6, right? Still the that question about your g1 knight. And now this is what uh, he wants, bishop e3. 
and then knight here knight here and that a uh, knight f4 Amruta. or knight f2 yes whatever knight f2 knight f4 this is exactly what parham is looking for so now you know the strategic threat that parham has he wants to play no so prague is not going to castle prague is not going to castle here i feel can prague go h6 right now kick the bishop away yes i think g5 it's a, it's a could very also be a consideration way. i don't know for h6 depends on no but if you play your pawn here i go back bishop here later i want to anyway come back and push e4 so actually parham's i it's clear to me now that he's not going for g4 h4 business mm -hmm. he is going for e4 move which i can't stop by the way uh, or i can if i go bishop g6 right now yes that's a good move amruta very prophylactic idea because then if i push my pawn forward then you simply D4. lose this pawn yeah but the computer doesn't like bishop g6 much well it's in comparison a, it, to it h6 it says that least. then my knight can develop and castle so maybe there is something better black can go more aggressive here uh, sort of take advantage not just play a prophylactic move but kind of try and uh, say to white that uh, i call out your bluff here f3 and i'm going to play very very uh, that's decisively why a4. a4 a4 exactly a4 queen has to go back to d1 right mm -hmm. after a4 yeah queen d1 and now uh, the move h6 h6 bishop so you don't want to take because if you take i take bishop pair looks great so you go bishop h4 and now this very very cool move knight d5 it's so, tricky it's tricky because you are allowing him to play e4, e4 exactly. and uh, attack but on the other hand e4 is is a v terrible move because ah, then the knight jumps in and this is a big blunder fork. e4 is a blunder in a way it, it just wait to continue the to fi finish the uh, calculation after e4 knight e3 queen d2 yeah knight g2 check you also have knight h4 yes okay. the bishop is the, also there is no <laughs> double attack correct so this is bad and so the question now is that if e4 doesn't work then maybe you want to take here but then after e d5 suddenly yes that's what prag does he pushes the pawn to a4 timing that's an amazing he, he timing he just knows it and now with e d5 e4 is not coming in maksudlu would be thinking like why did i play f3 oh yes and now his development is absolutely visible yes so let's see now maksudlu does he have some uh, special move after a4 does he want to go back with his queen to a2 i don't like it no not queen a2 on a2 is looking but when he played f3 there. i'm sure he considered a4 so we no, have to see sure. what he has in his mind but you know amruta maksudlu risks things you know he's not uh, like there are many things about him which are not just on the board but even in his personality like i remember that when we invited him to come to chennai to yeah. play <laughs> there were certain uh, visa related things which you know he had to get his visa to india and stuff and i was seriously worried you know like will he make it will he get his visa on time but parham was so relaxed he was <laughs> like yes everything will be fine don't worry queen diva and you know somehow his approach which which he has in his um, uh life goes on to the chess board as well or maybe it's the other way also yeah like the yeah. chess board approach goes into his life he is not too worried about things own um, uh, resu bad results but that's always going to happen right sometimes things will be good for you yes. things will not sometimes it won't be good for you that's how it is also agar when but you, you have to what? choose your opponent where you try this and i think prag is a very dangerous guy to try this stuff because if someone is very very technically sound it's prag you can like if he did this with someone else like let's say for example navara then the game would be crazy like both are uh, he also likes both, that kind of yeah situations. both are like crazy players but it's like you know mikhail tal had the worst results against viktor korchnoi because whenever he faced korchnoi tal would go on this crazy uh, sort of sacrifices and korchnoi was the best defender out there 
So I think uh, he had some seven wins against Tal and so on. Like Mikhail could never uh, get through uh, Victor. Mm. But maybe it's the similar analogy here, you know, that Prague really is built up on this playing accurate chess. He has this engine-like play. And then when Parham tries all these innovative things against him, this is a very good point you mentioned. In fact, I'm very curious to, you know, play with you next time a game and <laughs> maybe try a different style. <laughs> yes, what, 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 what style would you try against me? I would try Capablanca style. Yeah, you know? because I'm positional and you also want to try something like that. Huh? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's, what, that's why, you know, when we play each other, sometimes I know like you are aggressive. All I have to do is just be calm and you will go out like you'll start pushing your pawns. And that's why a psychology in chess plays such a big role. If you know your opponents, you can choose your openings. And this is what top level players do all the time. And I'm sure Prague understands right now this move F3 of Parham. He doesn't look at it as, oh wow, did Parham find a great move? He just knows that Parham likes to do these things. Mm -hmm. One last question to you, Sagar, about your uh, personal uh, ways you play chess. Yeah. Would you call yourself a messy chess player or a normal? Like, no, organized? I hate mess. Like when I was playing at And why do you make so much mess at home? <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, that was the point. You know, always everything doesn't sort of uh, translate from the chessboard to or real life. Or you could life. give it a try when we go back home. Yes. You could clean it up. I will. I okay. will, Amruta. Let's I will just like my style. But also, I haven't played chess for such a long time. But I've evolved as a person in the last five years. So I'm very, very curious. If I go back to the chessboard, will I play like my old style? Or will I play like some new completely things, you know? So, by the way, what did he do? Knight of d7. Oh, we did not consider this at all. Knight f d7. So, he wants to exchange the dark square bishops. And I believe his understanding is without those bishops, Prague has some positional Okay, very, very interesting move, Amruta. Firstly, what happens for bishop e7, I queen e7? I think he e7. must take, he must take, right? Because and if, then you, e4. Uh, if you don't take and if yeah, you bring your bishop back, that won't be great. No, yeah, takes, you waste time. Takes. Yes, so you take and now Prague will take back with the queen, which he did. So now... Now if e4... e4, yes. Uh, queen, no, h4, h4. I, I think what Prague is essentially saying is that without your dark squared bishop, I am happy with this position because your d4 pawn is weak, your dark squares are slightly weakened here. That's why he went 97. It's but Parham does just that. He just pushes his pawn to e4, okay. Prague has to move his bishop back now. I think there's nothing more. But, but for some reason, Prague discarded the move knight d5. Yes, yeah? yes. I'm a bit what, surprised. What would he have calculated? I that think he, he didn't he just like didn't it. want to go for some really complicated stuff. Isn't that again, as you say, psychology? Because sometimes, you know, Parham loves such kind of positions. Could and be. even if it is slightly worse, the fact that you love to play such positions make your opponent a little bit intimidated. Yeah. About that kind of position. Okay. E4 so, played. Now the center is there for white. Wow, black. this is getting interesting. I it like is I like this. 40 point. minutes, 41 minutes to Prague, 44 for Ham. One guy so is terribly will. unhappy here. Knight on G1. <laughs> He's like, have everyone forgotten me? What is my future this here? My time. <laughs> but, but, get him out here. You know, Knight H3. Put it on F4. Maybe hey, get him. Hello, Queen H4. Yes, but Queen Knight F2. F2. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Knight F2. Come back and then castle. And all of a sudden, God it's I... a nice position. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. And Sagar, can we see Vidit versus Navara? Oh. And to check if you are getting a chocolate or not. Oh, did he play? No, awesome. No, what is <laughs> Don't was, give me your hand. Give you me a chocolate. <laughs> Knight F5 <laughs> is on the board. And congratulations to you. You guessed it right. Uh, on wow. So, knight f5 has happened, Vidit did play it, uh, if we can have Vidit versus Navara uh, here, on the, yes, there we have it, so, Nodir, sorry, Vidit versus Nodirbek, not Navara, Rook e5, oh, Amruta, I'm, ah, okay, he didn't take the bishop, I was like, what, did he give him the knight here to keep this position, no, he took the knight, Rook f5, bishop came back. 
Opposite colored bishop again. Uh, question here, do you put your pawn on f6? Do you put your pawn on g6? Do you keep it on the same color as your opponent's bishop? Do you even think about rook g5 maybe to just put pressure on g2? So many little decisions now to take. And but he game. has 50 minutes and he has 16 minutes more than Vidit. Yes. That's a good point. Also, if you see the pawn islands, Vidit has three pawn islands. So I like rook on e5 also very interesting. Yes, but Amruta, right now, ah, you don't, you're not afraid because rook g8 and you lose g2. I mean, I, I didn't say for this moment, but in general. But it's a good point. I mean, I can even just attack you because if you take this pawn, I will go rook g8 and I'll take this pawn and black is the one on oh, the offensive. Yeah. You really don't need to defend g7. So, I think here, Vidit would be happy with what he has got because this means that he can press for long term. But at the same time, objectively, this is a draw. You think so? Yeah, I mean, if objectively, black, I mean, at the evaluation, it's just it, like give it to an yeah. engine and it would draw this position. Mm -hmm. Northern Beck goes h5, and I really like this move because. He is somehow limiting this structure. He's not letting white expand easily. Yeah. And as we have already seen, taking this pawn is incorrect because of rook g8. So what would Vidit do here? One thing is clear, Sagar. With this game, we are going to have a long night. That's Without true. the knights on the board. <laughs> Still. <laughs> yes, I agree, Amruta. This is going to be a long one. Especially given that Vidit really is, the, is in this mindset of pressing till the very end. Because he, he's preparing himself not just chess-wise, but also psychologically for the candidates. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll come back here. We'll visit this game. Meanwhile, something Ooh, uh, crazy, yeah, crazy has happened game. in the I game of game. Vincent versus David Navara. We, we left this game at... Here, oh, he pushed his pawn to e4. Amruta, we didn't even think about this move. We were thinking he should neutralize with the bishop coming here. But Vincent chose a very direct approach. And of course, his point is clear that yeah. if you take here with the knight, that would be blunder, a huge blunder. blunder. Because after take, of course, if you take with the pawn, you lose your knight. But what if I take with the rook? Still well, you then take... take take and then you lose this so so that's not happening navara played here pawn takes pawn david takes the pawn and tells um, vincent what is your plan so vincent says my plan is to take here f takes and now if you go and uh, snatch this pawn this would be a big mistake why is this a bad move white to play Maybe you guys can try it. Fantastic bishop f7. This is a great move. And this is very typical. It often happens yes. from black side in these um, uh, Italian positions where bishop ah. f2 comes, queen f6. And here it's actually white. And even the better of knight f7. Yes, it's similar idea. Takes and now I can give a check and I can pick this up. At the very least, there are other ways to also get yeah, back the material. Important blunder, don't make it queen f3 check because the knight goes back to f6. Yes, Amruta, that's a nice point <laughs> there. Queen h5 probably. Queen h5 is again a very nice move because if king g8... Ah, then the same five. idea. Queen d5. Yeah, nice. And, and bishop e6, you have uh, at least... Queen e4? Ah, no, d2 is hanging. And then the knight is hanging here. So, yeah, very well spotted. Very well spotted. We have a very strong player here in the view, uh, in the viewing zone. Uh, and this looks good. Queen h5 check. So, clearly, Vincent didn't want to take the pawn. He had his move planned and his move was g5. What a move. I thought g5, the bar would really change the evaluation. But, but it's the really. best move, Amruta. G5 is the best move in the position. Vincent Keimer showing uh, his class here, really. 
playing some but great. Played G5 yesterday also. He lost, he lost yes, yesterday G5 didn't work out well for him, <laughs> Vincent, because there Pragnananda sacrificed a piece on G5. Yeah, exactly. But today, it looks safer in that sense because the knight is here. Imagine you go here and if you are not careful, next move could be knight takes G5. <laughs> that would oh bring God. some nightmarish feeling for Vincent. Disastrous it would be. Mm. <clears throat> but Amruta, if you put your knight on f5 here, then bishop takes f5, ef5, and then you have to consider this rook takes b3 ideas because the bishop on d2 is hanging. So clearly, Vincent has all of this covered uh, in this position. And maybe. Uh, as we now do a short roundup, Amruta, yes, maybe five we moves. can also get ready for uh, the break, our first break of the day coming in. So, firstly, let's have a look at what is happening on all the boards and do a roundup. Gukesh seems to be doing very well against uh, Thai Dai Wan, Yuan Thai Dai Wan. Rapport seems to be slightly better against um, Bartel. Bartel. We have Abdu Sataro who is going to have to fight for a half point here against Vidit. Vincent Kaimar has just sort of equalized perhaps. It's a sharp game but I think he is doing well there against Navara. And Pragnananda versus uh, Maksudlu if you see. Knight has developed on the far corner and castled. So I feel the position is round about even there. So an interesting few hours lie ahead of us. For now, it's time to go on a short break and we'll see you on the other end. My name is Karel Janicek and I am a mathematician and a social innovator. When I was a kid, I played chess competitively and loved strategic card games. I may have been a mathematician since birth, at least as far as I can remember. For more than 12 years, I have been investing my energy to help society in various areas such as education, the science, art, sports, the fight against corruption, increasing public participation as well as improving democratic processes. We are now at the crossroads of history and my aim is to help our society to successfully face the critical challenges of our civilization. In 2013, I invented a revolutionary voting system D21 to bring consensus to our decisions. With the D21 system, we will have the opportunity to elect better politicians and prevent the polarization of society. D21 is the key to saving democracy and its implementation for political elections is absolutely crucial. Another innovative product we developed together with scientists from the Science21 Foundation is the revolutionary mathematic game Mateso. I believe that Mateso will enable children from all over the world to learn mathematics in a fun way and help them develop critical thinking a crucial skill in today's turbulent times of omnipresent information and misinformation. That is why we came up with the innovative board game Mateso, which brings mathematics closer to all age groups in a fun way. By playing Mateso, preschool children subconsciously gain knowledge of key information about the structure of the number system without having to know any number or perform a single calculation. Namely, the game includes a multiplication table, prime numbers, factorials, Fibonacci numbers, and the concept of zero. By playing this game, a so-called backbone algorithmic system is created in a very entertaining way. It is a natural consequence of certainty in all basic mathematical operations. With Mateso, starting primary school mathematics would no longer be scary. It will change into a fun subject. For school-age children and teenagers, this game has a similar effect. However, the activation rate of the backbone algorithmic system is inversely proportional to the age and the level of dislike of mathematics that individuals acquired during the classical educational process. For adults, 
This game is not only a way to teach their children the necessary basics in mathematics, but also an opportunity to find their own acquired blockages in this field and gradually get rid of them. Mathematics is all around us and it is beautiful. However, its beauty is easy to overlook if we don't know how to look. Matheso is the way to learn. Karel Janeček, proud partner of Prague International Chess Festival.
वेलकम बैक एवरीवन टू द सेकंड राउंड ऑफ द प्राग इंटरनेशनल चेस फेस्टिवल अमृता द प्राग मास्टर्स इज अंडर वे एंड वी हैव हैड सम एक्साइटिंग गेम्स टुडे वी आर टू आवर्स इनटू प्ले रफली टू टू आवर्स ट्वेंटी मिनट्स एंड दिस इज गेटिंग क्वाइट इंटेंस नाउ द गेम व्हिच वी वांट टू बिगिन विद इज द गेम ऑफ परहम मकसूदलू एंड प्रज्ञानंदा दे वन देयर गेम येस्टरडे एंड वी सॉ how parham took this bold decision of pushing his pawn to f3 uh let's have the analysis board and there we can see parham thinking the by the game. way by the way sagar they both are on one point and norderberg's position says that he definitely cannot win that i think so, very unlikely that he yeah, will win yeah so today. if somebody wins in this game he might already become a sole leader yes true so that's a big big encounter here when uh he played his pawn to f3 clearly his knight on g1 wasn't very happy but then he did get his knight out prag castled he also castled here parham and prag played his pawn to f6 so he's making way for the bishop to come back baby and also to strike in the center with the move e5 but parham you know as always direct play he pushes his pawn in the center we have pawn to yeah, e5 exactly that is such a cool and simple idea by prag exchanging the dark square bishop first like in nimzo we do and then placing the pawn on the dark square then gaining the very important d4 central square but yes. that is what parham doesn't want uh, pragnanda to do it so f4 is a natural idea right yeah f4 Would, is natural did he have natural. anything better well amruta there were many ways to play but i think prag's idea of pushing e5 was there and in fact parham took this opportunity to exchange and push his pawn forward and he feels like now he has space on the king side but on the other hand strategically he is taking big risks because the b3 square is weak you can already imagine a knight jumping here and coming to the center of the board the bishop landing nicely on the square so one gets the feeling that parham seems to have overextended a bit which he always does and which, which is still never easy for his opponents because that is what he provokes them yes. in a way yes that is his style and so when you just feel like oh positionally i am good and this is really nice but parham is making his own plans here and that is exactly what he does he plays queen e1 and i won't be surprised if the next move by the way is just covered the h4 square if he goes g4 g5 and already starts launching a huge attack and then he tells uh, prag take all the weaknesses you want take the d4 square but i am going for your king you know in some way this position a little bit ideas remind me of sicilian when you have this f5 and yes. g4 g5 attack but a very big difference is that the pawn is on d6 for black here the pawn on c6 nicely controls the d5 square i agree with you there is just no worry there a prag structure is beautiful but then again amruta i am going like this caveman approach yeah i am going for your king g4 g5 queen g3 king goes to h1 maybe then g6 at the right moment are, are you sure that's not too much well it is uh, it is definitely an engine would refute it but what about humans yeah like uh, prag you can see will definitely be thinking against it so let's say i i start with my knight jumping to okay. c5 makes sense right just just a move before i would like to ask a question to the viewers which they will they can think a, think later yeah at this point of time an important thing happened an important imbalance happened takes takes what was the important imbalance mm. the transition what was it amruta <laughs> <laughs> no like i am curious please can you tell us yes at this moment if you see the pawn structure has changed. Mm. Yes, black is having now after d takes e5 f takes e5 three pawn islands. So the e5 pawn has become isolated. We don't know if in the future how much it's going to matter, but we cannot forget that fact. Yes, I agree. That's a very important thing to notice because once you notice these things, you can then plan accordingly. So let's say I jump with my knight here. 
and I go uh, G4. Yeah, let's just. Oh, he played? No, no, no. This you is not going to happen. But okay, I'm you just, are suggesting I'm just, G4. I'm just making the. Once again, move. it's not your game, so it's. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying like, okay, knight B3. No, I like, I'll, I'll I like save, the idea. I, I'll yeah? save my rook. I'll For bring sure. my rook in the center. Knight D4 without any doubt. And let's say you put your knight here. I was wondering now if I can just play because I don't want to give up my bishop. I'll just play it in the center. And now I'm still threatening, let's say, g5, queen g3. Not a threat, but this is my plan. But, but why I, did you go bishop d3? Are you worried about my beautiful knight, uh, you know, giving it up for that bishop? Also, sometimes, you know, the bishop, like after takes, bishop could land on c4. And I was not really happy ah, to give it up. Precisely, maybe tactically. And, so and bishop I just want to attack. So I, I want to free my queen, go to g3 and so on. But you have knight c4 and, and it just feels that black pieces are coming way quicker than white's attack. Yeah, and the space which you have on the king's side, there is a big problem with that. Yeah. There are no pieces to cover it up. I agree. So this, yeah, this doesn't look that great for the time being right now. Uh, it's definitely very exciting. It's, that's it's the exciting. whole point. It's and exciting. And that's why when sometimes it's so tempting in a game, will Parham go for that? No, he's already played Queen E1. So, Amruta, now I think we are going down this road. He's already taken a few steps in this direction. His pieces are a little bit uh, not coordinated for anything apart from an attack. Like, what else do you do? You don't start playing positionally, right? You bring your knight now here to, sorry, F2 to D3. That doesn't feel right. No, 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 no. One thing he can do. He can keep his queen on G3. Yeah. He can bring his knight from F2 to G4 or D3 at the right time. Like he this. will have to choose. Even that, mm -hmm. and keep pressure on e5 in a way that one knight is tied down. Yeah, could be. That that seems very. Slow. But you are so right that somewhere white is the passive one, yeah. and it's not up to Parham style, so he won't sit quietly. Also, That's we are on move e1. twenty, Amruta, and both players have now twenty six to thirty minutes. Thirty one for Parham, twenty six for Prague. This is going to get exciting. Let's quickly shift yes. to the game. Between, um, I think Gukesh's game Gukesh we have not seen since Guen. a long time, and it was very interesting. You and Thai Dai won. So we left this game at night a six, and we said to ourselves, "Great opening strategy by Gukesh. He's played it well. Uh, White's pieces look a bit sort of, uh, you know, a bit cramped. D three is weak. D four square is weak. But then Thai Dai won. Brought his rook to D one. Gukesh brought his knight in." He offered a trade of knights. The knights were traded. And then the bishop came to g4. So he developed his bishop. Oh, is he going to take the f3 knight? No, he no, did he not. Goes he, back. he goes back. Maybe just provoking this little move so that afterwards, queen d7, he can attack this pawn. Queen c3 nice, played. Nice idea by Gukesh, actually. And now, I think Thai Dai wants this uh, maneuver seems a bit artificial. He goes queen c3. Gukesh anyway wanted to play f6 and now queen a3. What is he aiming for? I, he's just trying to attack the c5 pawn, right? Right. So, and you can't go b6, I believe. Why right? not? Is the question. Can we just Is it not, just a ghost? Can oh. we not just say to white that, hey, you played like a couple of moves, put your queen on the side of the board where it absolutely makes no sense. But there is an idea that Thai Dai Wan has here and white to play. What is the move that he is preparing for here? Because a bishop on g2, I mean, if black is not scared of that diagonal and plays b6, then he should be very okay. Yes, but this is what he wants to do now. White to move. The move is, and maybe you guys can... Knight, uh, knight to g5, knight to g5, g5 is exactly g5. the idea he wants. Attacking here. Lovely. So if f, g, uh, f takes g5, bishop takes c6, that is... Very bad, yeah. And take here. And now comes so the important bad. moment where uh -huh. if you move your rook, then the queen on a3 is very happy. You know, rook a7 c8. is weak. What do no, you do? No, if I go rook c8, then your bishop Yes, I go come back to g2. But then bishop takes h3. Bishop takes h3. H3. And this is the compensation which white will have, black will have. Like if you take here, this is game over. Wow. So... Beautiful. Clearly, Gukesh is calculating these lines. He is looking at taking on h3 and then if you take the rook, game over. 
So if you take here and then, what does white do? He's just lost a pawn. Beautiful. In fact, this provoking h3 was such a great idea. Wow. Now even yeah. better. Makes sense now. Yeah, we just saw bishop g4 <laughs> going back, provoking h3 and that pawn falling there. Interesting. So we'll wait if Gukesh plays the cold-blooded b6. You know, that will just show that he's not afraid of any ghosts in this position. He'll just play b6. But on the other hand, why not knight b4? It's also a nice move. But like, if you tell uh, Gukesh there's a symmetry around... <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way, that that's true. You know, there is a very famous uh, symmetry here uh -huh. next to this hotel. And uh, of course, Amruta, uh, <laughs> when she got to know this, she was like, Oh, I can't sleep at night alone and stuff. Okay. But um, it's a very nice uh, place. I, I liked it. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> you brought up the Can subject. Can we change yes, the topic? I never, I never started it. I knew you would say about it, but so the I. Bishop as a ghost is not so scary now. B six, I think. Okay, she will play it. Okay. But night before also makes sense. So clearly, Gukesh has um, many, many options here to choose from. Let's see what he will do. Let's quickly go and check the game between uh, Kaimer and Navara because. We left it at this point when the pawn was pushed to g5 and there David brought his knight back to f3 and now Vincent went and chopped off the pawn on e4. He okay. simply took the pawn and David pushed Ooh. his pawn Ooh, to he's g4. He's giving up the dark square bishop. Uh, but what choice did he have? g3 was hanging. Yes. And So he goes here. And now after take, mm -hmm. you can't take with the queen, I believe, because the b3 bishop is hanging. So therefore, knight takes. And this is what we have on the board. Knight e5 played here by uh, David. No, Don't by Vincent. Be, uh, sorry, by Vincent. Don't be fooled by the simplicity of this position. Because somewhere, you know, the queen can be moved here. A rook suddenly can be sacrificed. The queen can enter in and we already have a strong attack brewing. But then again, all these imaginative ideas can be stopped by just one simple mooking g7 <laughs> and nothing much is happening. So, yes, I do feel Amruta that with the lack of the number of pawns on the board, it feels like the position is roundabout even like, you know, this should end up in a draw. But tell me one thing, whose king would you say is weaker? I think black clearly because white's king is quite safe. You can tuck it into h1 and it looks pretty good. In that case, I think, isn't it that slight initiative for white yeah. because of the king weakness? Yes, I would say that if someone's fighting here for something, it's white but nothing special. Like, you know, you can go queen c2, king g7 as we just analyzed. Um, and then maybe we put our knight on the e4 square, which is a nice central square. Yes, and then f6 square is tremendously weak. Rook can come to f1. f7 is weak. I think I really like David's you, you, position yeah, you start so much more hmm. than what the evaluation bar is saying. I agree with you. Yeah, like it does feel for a human that uh, White's position has more potential. Yeah, Maksud Lu watching the game, Bartel watching the game. Because this position is definitely the most interesting uh, for the current moment. Yes, but you know, Amruta, he didn't go queen c2. He directly played his knight to e4. Oh, there's a direct threat? No, not yet. There's knight on e5. I thought queen d7. Ah, <laughs> you have to be careful. You wanted to take here, take no, here, no, no, and then fork. But yes, bishop c6 might be what could be played. And this is what can happen. And uh, now if you go queen c2, bishop e4, uh, the black would not l like to give but, that but bishop. But I, I, I instead of taking, bishop. why don't I just plonk my knight here yeah. and then mm. unleash my bishop and rook against mm. your knight. So How come it's not a blunder? Because knight d3, well, d1. Well, the thing is, what is this doing? knight is not really threatening to take here if I move my knight away. Uh, and, and so then if you take... Oh, there is a big issue. Oh, wow. What a defense. Yes, that is the point. Just move in with your queen and that is game over. So this trick is always... Can you show till the mate, Sagar? Checkmate. Okay, king How do we checkmate? Takes here. 
and maybe we ask our uh, viewers here what they would like to play. Maybe they, they spot it already. Knight, yes, knight h5 looks really powerful. There's a mate here, knight f6 coming in, and there's just no way to stop it. Black has no moves actually to uh, to prevent this. Yeah, so what did he play? By the way, Vincent has gone bishop c6 right now. Yes, it is on the board. And now uh, I'm actually curious to see what David does. Because there are these, the, because of this bishop is where all the juice in the position lies. Yeah. You know, this is the the nice little bishop there looking at the king. And time-wise, Vincent has 19 minutes. David has 37 minutes on the clock. How many moves they have made? Um, they have made 27 moves. Here. Okay, so 13 moves, so not much of a time problem right now. Okay, shall we, do you want to stay here? Because it's a very interesting position for sure. No, we'll go but to the next think, one. I, I want to go to the game of, uh, by the way, okay, let's quickly check Vidit's game because here he was pawn up, h5 was played, Vidit went rook h e1, getting the open file, Nodir Beck pushed h4, h3, rook g5, and now, I was a bit surprised with Vidit's decision. I thought he would go rook e2, putting his rook here and defending this pawn. But he went rook g1. And uh, I'm not so sure why, why he would do that. Maybe yeah. he just wants to bring the other rook or yeah. he thought if he played rook e2, one pair of rooks would get traded with rook e8 and he wanted to avoid it. So if he goes rook g1, black will go rook e8 with the idea of maybe if he wanted to go rook e1. That's exactly what uh, Nodirbek has done. Okay. C4. C4. Rook e6. And now bishop went back and the rook came here. And uh, you know, a3 played oh. just the just as we are on this board. Uh, Nodirbek wants to actually sort of pile up on this a pawn. Exactly. And uh, I'm a bit unsure on how you can defend it actually. No, maybe some counter attack bishop f2. Yes, but then yes. there is g5. Bishop f2. Because if you take on a pawn, I will win this h pawn. I don't know how that trade is. Because if you take here, uh, take here, take here, maybe it's a very good thing for white because the a pawn was anyway a bit weak. So I would I would go for your idea, which is g5 now to defend my pawn still. Saying that this Ooh, is weak. It's and bad the computer doesn't like it for yeah, some... Because, because I go back and I attack it again. So you can't still take. And if you go f6, and you, defend you go bishop now, b4. <laughs> my bishop actually plays against your pawns all the time. Oh, nice. In that case, I would prefer to give the h4 pawn. Yes. And win the a pawn. I, I, How I bad or good it is. But I don't think Nodirbek will go for it. No? You, you you see, he just went to g6. He did not even think about going to a6. He put his rook here. And one of the main problems for Vidit is that he ha his position has a lot of weak pawns. The g2 pawn is weak. The a3 pawn is weak. So how does he manage to sort of get his pieces rolling? Where is his plan? What is the way in which he starts to create some play for himself? Yeah, he definitely has a lack of harmony in the position. Yeah. One thing to do is to start rolling his central pawns like c3, d4, c5. But or then again... can you make your king? King is a piece in the endgame. So let's say king c3. It uh -huh. defends that a guy. You want to bring your king where? Here? Yeah. Could be. Could be an idea. And then you want no, to free up to your rook, yes? Yeah. So let's say I go b6 just as an uh, you go king, king b2. King b3. King b3 maybe. Not b2. Or king b4 yeah, maybe. But, I, I... but you know Amruta, these rooks are so good. You know Nodirbek has used instead of files, ranks to get his rooks active. It's actually very smart play by him. Oh and look at what Vidit has done. Vidit says, hey, talking about ranks, I'm closing one of the ranks for you. c5. Suddenly, that rook seems to be slightly cornered on that side. But what if b6, just the very natural thing which comes to the mind? Great move, Amruta. This seems like a good move. 
you have to either take or go deep i just plays it he plays your move uh yeah but maybe we can take it right what's what's so ah, your double pawn is gone yeah, that's yeah mm. so, so i CB take six you take back ab6 yeah but now a serious threat has emerged which is if i'm careless let's say i play c4 um not really actually i was i was thinking that we could uh, move and start attack the bishop controls this so for now actually it's not a big threat not at all yeah. I, i think there are several ways in which white can play like king e2 king f2 but i i get this feeling that yeah the look g1 move i think i have a little i have some doubts on it yeah because completely tied down and at the end of it what we know is the rook on g6 is attacking rook on a5 is attacking and every attacking piece is valued more than the yeah. defender so so clearly guys clear noderbek abdu satarov is doing it uh, well here he is defending well and uh, i think for vidit it's not going to be easy to convert this uh going to the game of uh, you know amruta now the moves are coming in quick and fast the game david navara where we were thinking mm. that he would go queen c2 he has just played his bishop right in the central square Whoa. making use of the tactic which you were talking about so if you take here bishop d5 uh, bishop d5 i have queen d5 queen d5 knight f6 check I don't know what happens next. I I believe it's just a simplifying maneuver. Yes. Exactly. Because that bishop was like the, as you said, an important yeah. one which was giving some hope there. So maybe a calm draw for yes by. Uh, no, 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 not calm. David. I think David will still keep playing with knight e3, knight on f5, h6 being weak, a little bit. Yes. But a safe position. Like you were saying him. here, if I go c6, you want to go knight e3. But then you have to really be Rook careful. Rook b2. I can't go knight d3. You have knight f5. But okay, I can go king g6. Rook b2. No, you can't go rook b2. Possible, but but I don't see it being a, such a big problem like this position. Knight f5. Just try to make two. Yeah, you, few the, quick the moves. only thing is my knight also is very solid here on the this square. So look, look. No, no, rook a7. One, I I missed rook a7. Yes. One mistake and. It's possible, yes. Uh, Black has to be the one who has to be careful, and I would say that with that h6 weakness and the rook and knight and the mating net. Next, I will play my pawn to h5. In, in fact, why not now? You know that h6 weakness, I just get rid of it. What if rook a6 doesn't matter, yeah? Yeah, not H4. much. G4. Not not much. So yes, Amruta. Hey. Yeah. Ha. No, sorry. When I play g h5, king h5, knight g7, but king f5 is the problem. <laughs> yeah, clearly this is. Okay. so this will fizzle out okay so coming back here by the way the game between pragna nanda and maksud lu has moved ahead a lot for example oh. after queen e1 we had the knight jumping in as we predicted mm -hmm. then we had queen g3 didn't go for g4 no and no we also problem. have to keep jumping from one game to another game that means if they're playing so fast yes and prag played bishop c4 very quickly trading rook e1 he took No, he played his rook to d8. Knight came here. Oh, he does. Did not go for g4 ideas. No, he, he did must not. have realized it, or maybe he never intended that. We And this is the live board position right now that we have. Um, if there is something going in White's favor, it's just this isolated pawn on e5, Amruta, as you rightly pointed out. But everything else. is working in black's favor the knight is coming to c4 yeah. the other knight is very actively placed the rook is on the open file so i get this feeling that prag is in the driver seat clearly yeah. here yeah it's like it's in strategic sense Just, black is blessed right now you don't get such a position he's doing so really he's well and with this knight beautifully placed I think for Parham this position is tough but as you said Amruta G yes 94 G4. now you have to be a little your... careful about f6 ideas sagar oh yeah but oh. king h8 no just move to the side of the board and uh, f6 no longer is a problem but ng4 still f6 could be an idea yes. where he sacrifices the pawn and goes knight at 6 knight f5 <laughs> Amruta you're playing like Parham for sure at not immediately but it's in no, the no but air. this is this, this is, is definitely in the air that the knight could come and say where i can here. get my rook yeah. also in the game very quickly my rook is already on f2 so i don't think it's going to be as easy like how much ever strategically better pragnanda is 
Parham is very creative on the board. I agree. I agree. But at the same time, uh, Parham's time is, yeah, he has 10 minutes more on the clock. And how many moves? They are on move 24. They have to make 16 more moves in 17 minutes. 27 minutes for Parham. Let's quickly go and check the game of uh, Bartel and Rapport, which we haven't seen much after B takes A4. Here, Rook takes A4. Queen came up. Rook took the Rook. Rook takes Rook. Queen B3. And he went back with his Knight. So, Bartel... Uh, playing his knight back in that position, the rook coming on the open file, you can feel it, no, Amruta, that white yeah. is slightly better coordinated. For sure, with a better bishop and with a, with again, active pieces. Bishop e3, rook b8, he played his queen here, queen b7. Made many moves, actually. B5, b5. what is this Oh, move? this is an interesting move. If you take here, he wants to actually chop off the d6 pawn. So... He went oh, c5. Oh, it's a discovered attack. Mm -hmm. B1. Now this is a... Will it be a hero or zero? <laughs> Knight that C6, passer, I think it's right now... Yeah, it's, it's in that stage where you don't know, right? Because <laughs> if the knight settles down here, this might become a it's big weakness. It's in that weakness. stage wherein you come to Mumbai to become a Bollywood hero and then you keep trying and then you don't know. <laughs> yeah, right now it's very unclear what its career is going to be, the b5 pawn. Queen b3. He's attacking this e6 pawn. Queen went back to c8. Knight d2. He goes to b4. Knight jumps in. You still You're playing like time this pressure, pawn. yeah. <laughs> this is hanging, and queen d7. So, if you push your pawn to b6 now, Amruta, just defended by the knight, perhaps the bishop comes back and still. I don't. I out. can't go d5, right? No, no. I don't think you should go for d5. D5, bishop, c5. Yes, this pawn would hang, but this is interesting now. Yeah, bishop d8. Finally, the bishop has some job. So, my feeling is that Bartel is actually holding on here. These central pawns are a bit soft, but his b pawn is a bit weak. We, we might come back here and see what happens. Uh, and we have reached here in the Vincent game. Queen takes d5 has happened. There is also knight f6, king f8. He didn't go to <coughs> g7. Knight takes d5 and Amruta... Uh, I am I am predicting a very quick handshake here between David Navara and Vincent Keimer. I don't think um, this game is going to go long. So, if we have to make a roundup, if we can have all the five boards here, and just so that everyone knows what's happening, uh, <clears throat> I would say Gukesh maybe slightly better against Thai Dai Wan. Bartel and Rapport around equal. Yes. Abdu Satarov playing really well and I think will hold a draw against with it. Although he's pawned down. Yeah. He will hold a draw in that opposite colored bishop. Yeah, position. actually, I think we are completely wrong. We thought the advantage is much huge. Yeah. And uh, going to Kaimer versus Nawara. Very equalish position here. Four pawns each, two rooks, knight. And so maybe, and I think I, I think we guessed it right, right? From the beginning. Oh, no, I actually I said Gukesh's game might be the game yeah, of the I day. Yeah, I said Pragnanda versus Maksud Lu. But it the is day, becoming but... the most exciting game for sure right now. Prag versus Maksud Lu and Gukesh versus Gyu and Thai Dai Wan. These are the two games where we have a lot of imbalance that's, going on and by the way guys you can vote for the best game of the day from 4 p.m so it's already started uh, yes it's already now it's close to 6 p.m so go to pratchessfestival.com slash voting and you can vote for your best game of the day today uh, which i'm not sure i which think one is Prag, i don't know exactly i agree with you maybe david also was turning into something very exciting but after the no but changes, now it's now, now it's fizzled and also also the moves which happened c6 knight came in and here we might think oh there is a huge tactic like you take here take here and a fourth 
Yeah, he just takes on f6 and there's nothing much happening here. So this should be a draw. We will go back to the game of Prague and Maksudlu here. Oh, he takes on e5. Amruta, just staying here. Uh, he took on e5. Because they'll ag agree for a draw in a way, Rook ending. You think they'll agree to a draw? In a way, for Vincent, after losing yesterday with the black pieces, today again black pieces slightly uh, somewhere under pressure, I would say. I mean, David was never under pressure that way. So it's he just comes back. Yeah, like good, calm good performance and, you know. by by uh, Vincent and also a good start for David Navara because he drew with Vidit yeah. and now with Vincent. So a very steady start for him in this tournament. Uh, let's go to Pragnananda versus Maksudlu because the move which you suggested, knight coming to g4 and creating this kind of threats of f6, knight at 6, putting pressure on e5 did happen. And then Prag just moved his king to h8. And Very quickly, yeah. He didn't take any time to go king h8. You can see Parham, he's like, oh, where is the next sort of interesting idea I can do something? Yeah, really want to go rookie f2, but there is rook d3 or knight d3 ideas uh, have to check. Knight d3 is a problem. Oh, but directly. I, I really like your move, Amruta, because you want to go ah, f6. Knight d3, f6 is intermezzo? Yes, so if I play knight d3 right here. Mm -hmm. F6 may be a very, very interesting move to consider. But let's say if GF6 here, yes, let's rook continue. Takes. Rook takes. Yeah. Uh, if you play. I take on B2 maybe. Yes, you yes, can take on B2. C B2. You can take on B2, but no, you can also do a very nice sort of uh, breaking of lines move. Here. What is breaking of lines? <laughs> like like this <laughs> line is sort it. of connected with the the two rooks are connected. You can break the line. Oh, knight f4. Yes, knight f4 with the idea of this uh, some deadly ideas later on and on the g2 square. And knight e2. Oh wow. If the knight moves away and you break the coordination there. So you force him to take on f8. Now rook takes f8. Yes. Rook takes f8. And then it seems like black is clearly winning oh, okay. here. Okay, can I go back for uh, one move? Knight f4 is great. But, but let's say natural is knight b2. If I take on b2, is there any problem? You I'm confused. Knight db2, let's say. I'm confused, but let's say knight db2. You can take, but hmm, Amruta now... What is it that I've missed? White gets... Ah, simple. It's what simple. Is? Just takes, take, take, take on f8 and then knight e5. Yeah. Yeah. Could be, yes. Could be the double times you take here and then you lose the pawn here in the center. But Parham has moved his rook up to f3. And this is why, you know, Parham mm. is one of the most exciting players in the world of chess. He never backs out. You know, it's not like he goes for the attack and then some point says, oh my god, I see a huge army in front of me. I'll run back to my uh, team. He just goes on and on. Now rook comes ahead. Hey, what if knight d2? You will have to go rook e3. Ah, you want to fork, yes? Those two knights from black <laughs> are so dangerous. They're threatening something or the other. What do you do? Yeah, it's a good move actually. Here, I rook have to three play forced? rook e3. Yes. And rook d4. Ah, you are coming in and trying. But Amruta, don't forget about your e5 pawn. It's also oh, weak. Yeah, yeah, Your knight on c4 I is told actually you doing I'm a forgetful person. Yeah. Let's go back. <laughs> it's doing a good job of defending the e5 pawn as well. So you can't just move it away. So knight b3. Finally, I'm like, okay, after elimination, I go knight b3. Knight but b3. then knight a4. Knight b3 might I don't not... think I'll worry about it. Knight but uh, why do you want to play... Yeah, give up this pawn, Amruta. Which one? a4? No, I don't care about it. Ah, you want knight to fork d4. me. Huh? You want to fork me. Yeah. There is still white as a good move here. Maybe if uh, we... No, I, I don't think... I think your move is fine, knight b3. In fact... No, no, what is the best move for white for knight b3? I'm curious. Um, because the computer is not really supporting knight b3 so much. Knight d4 is a strong threat. Maybe f6 so how somewhere or rookie f2 with the idea of f6. Ah, it's very dynamic. And if you go with your knight to d4... I play my rook. It feels like somehow Parham has to play with his two rooks to limit black's knight activity. That's what he has to do. 
it's tough i would say it's not easy but at the same time look at prag's time he's down to 15 minutes he has to figure out all the intricacies here it's not so simple for him as well a very exciting moment in this game what is pragnananda going to decide is he going to play knight knight uh, d2 as amruta suggested knight b3 or is he just going to forget everything and just play b5 and say par hum what's your idea now tell no, me no 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 not b5 sagar no prag goes like b5 it's like completely amruta. being in another amruta world amruta prag goes b5 that's his kind of a move prag you know how prag thinks prag sees the board and he sees what are the I threats of his opponent he But doesn't I, see any can, threat and then he plays b5 what i can bet you know look i would have won the bet and the bet was that you don't get chocolates <laughs> yes i won't i won't eat anywhere rook d4 played by prag no no so the whole idea is on e4 hmm. is improving his position for sure he's he's me- but you know amruta he cannot really easily go for moving that rook because then f6 comes in into the position so and where is uh, parham <laughs> last 20 minutes left and he's not on the board no, he's okay it. with those 10 20 seconds 26 moves 14 more moves to make Sir, Parham. he's calm. As you said, even when the last moment his visa was, you know, he was he hadn't received. You know how calm he was. Yeah, so he's calm. Like, but then why, why to waste this time? There he comes. Yes. Because he didn't know Prag was playing. But uh, you know, I really love how Parham has managed to keep the pressure yeah. with that uh, one pawn chain on the king side and a nine. It's yes. beautiful I, with the F five move. I, agree, I, I really that. underestimated it mm. in a way. Okay, so quickly going to the next game. We will go to Gukesh's game Gukesh. right now. Yes, let's go. Because that to... one was very interesting. Gukesh had a bi- qu- pretty decent advantage. Did, so, has he missed so anything? So Gukesh does go knight b4 here. Uh huh. Queen b3, queen c8. Yeah, with the one knight exchange, maybe things are a little different. Rook b8. I don't know where knight he could back. have improved though. Knight d2. king h8 queen c2 and we have this position on the board it's actually uh i think black is still the one for preference and choice here because i can go pawn to b6 i can move my bishop here i can bring my queen up to d7 plonk my knight in the center i do uh, like black's position uh, you know this is a this kind of reminds me of a reversed meroxibine structure yes. where in such a scenario the, at some point h4 h5 h6 is you know going to come uh, you mean from from black side yes from so, white side oh white will play this h4 h5 h6 but at that point of time the bishop the e3 bishop is generally on the diagonal of a1 h8 but you know so, the, what a common uh, idea here would be instead of h4 h5 maybe just f4 breaking this way that could also be yeah. a very very because now that way. you have bishop on e3 it does make a lot of sense yeah for sure nice idea actually f4 is really mm. powerful okay so f4 may be on the cards oh look at the time wan has 6 minutes oh, whereas gukesh has 22 know. minutes how many moves do they have to make they are on move 22 so 18 more moves to make in 6 minutes not easy for no. thai dai wan there And, and Gukesh the, knows that. By the way, we see in the background we Korobo. see Anton Korobo, the top seed of challengers, who was the sole leader yesterday after beating Vaishali because all other games ended in draws. He's there. Oh, that does remind us. Maybe we can have a very quick look at the challengers section. Can seven. we? Can we have that uh, sort of the overview of the challengers? Uh, yeah, the five boards. Yeah, we can take a break later. Le- no and break, then, we don't need. We can just do yeah. our. Uh, Maybe we can take. We can see the challenges later after the break. Yeah. So okay. then that can be fixed. So for now, let's continue with our coverage on the masters. Uh, going to the game of. Second game of. Uh, I wanted to go to the game of uh, Bartel, Bartel versus Rapport. And By Amruta. the way, Sagar, a very quick question, uh, yes. completely non-related with this. Mm-hmm. You have to answer in three seconds. Today is twenty-eighth February. Yes. Will tomorrow be twenty-ninth February? Yes. 
oh we have a leap year yes that's why you are leaping year <laughs> no and the and our, is, our uh, youngsters here in this tournament are leaping <laughs> I've Giant been, it's a very interesting yesterday question. already Prague went to you know number one live rating list in India. Yes, and even Crossed Northern Bank seven fifty for the first time. Northern Bank entered world top, top 10. ten. Yes, so yes, like kangaroos, they are all leaping. <laughs> true, true. By the way, knight a three, king eight seven played by Bartel, bishop went back, and d five. So. Bartel playing in the center, Rapport trying to maybe win a pawn here, but it's not so easy because if you take, 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 I play my bishop back and then I chop your knight and then I chop this pawn. So, but the major piece endgame would favor whom with the pass pawn? No, but this is falling for sure. Ah, like, you're I just take, that. you're losing that, take and I take, and that's a draw. Yeah, so that's the reason why he cannot go there, that. he takes on d5. Pawn takes, and now look at this move. Only Richard Rapport can do such stuff. Yeah. D four. D four. Oh, crazy! A square which is defended twice. Of twice. Course, <laughs> uh, of <laughs> course, we know we can't take with the C pawn. We lose a piece. So clearly, he must take with the E pawn. But now, this is his point. He wants to spoil the structure. Is he playing with the knight against that bishop? So if you take here, he wants to take here. And now the move that we were thinking about, right? Bishop e7, mm -hmm. queen b3, and it's a deep point. Takes, takes, and let's ask our viewers here why this is a blunder. Queen d3, queen d3 exactly, and that is why he played d4 move. And this is falling, so wow. a kind of a deep idea there. To push his pawn to d4. I'm sure Bartel won't fall for that. No, he trap, won't yeah? fall for it, but. But he has to be careful. He takes the pawn. If he was in time pressure, then it was a very dangerous yeah. one. But I already feel like if you can't get this thing here, then isn't white already better with the B passer? Maybe, yeah, maybe. So Bartel, uh, although the engine yeah. thinks it's equal, I feel humanly. He has to be very careful, although it helps that he has 21 minutes on the clock. Yeah. I, I like the idea of, I don't know, maybe you can just uh, try it out. Queen f5. Here. Yeah. yeah Does it go. make any sense? Very nice. Just, yeah. But b6, let's say. And d3. b7. Bishop d4. Hmm? Queen D4. Ah, no, no, no. Now, sorry, sorry. Now there's nothing anyway. On B1 was also protected. Yeah. So now what? Maybe just waiting. I, I don't see how this position is um, better for white because the B pawn is not running away. But you are right, Amruta, that this game can also get very sharp oh, with yeah, the B pawn. It is. The end game is getting sharp. We thought it will fizzle out, but it's not fizzling out. So he takes on B4 there. He's taken it. And now we are expecting pawn takes and queen takes, very likely. Richard is also able to surprise at many moments, right, with something so yeah. interesting yeah. in a plain position. No, he is uh, he's also a very, very creative player, just like Parham here. We have seen the best games between Magnus and uh, Richard and World Rapid. Oh, yes. So Some great games. 2022 like World Blitz Championship. You should definitely check it out. Uh, quickly going to the game. By the way, one result in, we have Vincent Kaimar and David Navara drawing their game, which was very likely to happen. So, good result for Czech Republic. Yes, for, for the Czech fans here, it's a great result because I think David has started off this tournament very solidly. Uh, Pragnananda did go B5, Amruta. Oh Although a my move, God. a move later. But still, but he, I considered it. I thought play. he's not going to look at the b7 pawn no, at he all. Just, he just improved his position. And by the way, the last move that Parham played was h3. And now came the move b5, gaining space on the queen side. I, I didn't get h3 at all. No, just keeping like a loop. The back later. rank, maybe. Yeah. 
But can wasn't be a useful he move. constantly giving threats? I mean, this move H three is a little slow for what he was aiming at. But now, what what threat can you give is also the question. Earlier, you could have gone rookie F two, right? Uh, or but was then, it a bad but then uh, your e4, e4 pawn, pawn is hanging yeah so like if you go here uh, for example rook to f2 uh, it you are threatening f6 but then again knight d2 with the threat here and you lose this pawn hmm. so that is a big problem here for for uh, makparham and the time has now almost equalized both players 13 minutes on the clock but if Parham doesn't, cannot double the rooks on f5, then his whole plan has come to a standstill because f6 is the only counterplay he has, if I'm not wrong. Or he will have to wait for Prag uh, Pragnanda. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, he has to actually now uh, figure out what to do, but it's not so clear. And he is right now burning his time. He's down to 13 minutes. He has to make 13 more moves. So everything is 13, yeah? Yeah, 13, <laughs> 13, 13 there. What was 13 for you? Any time, was it an unlucky number, a lucky number? <laughs> I think I never knew that 13 was unlucky or lucky. But then when I realized, <laughs> <You are lucky. laughs> when I realized that, that Gary Kasparov uh, was the 13th world champion. And he, and he was bo he's born on 13th April. Ah, really? Yeah, of oh. course. You wow. don't know Gary's birthday or That's when amazing. it comes closer to time. That's amazing. So he, he then he said like, you know, he, there's no luck, lucky or unlucky. Number, <laughs> you know, he just makes his own luck. Oh, by the way, Parham, did he push his pawn to F6? What? Wow. He just it's gave up the pawn. Here. And Amruta, maybe your idea is in play. After pawn takes pawn. I have a feeling that this knight is jumping in. But or the timing, I thought F6 here, uh, the evaluation is not changing anything like drastic, Sagar. Yes. Fantastic it, move by Parham. One move and, if and, we and go back. Know, Amrita, he, what he did was, instead of your yeah. idea, which was to play first rookie F2 and then F6, which was actually being met by knight D2 with, you know, now if you push, this knight takes the rook with a check. In check, Ripam. Yes. <laughs> but, but... He first gave the pawn, so that after take, now if you play knight d2, the rook simply takes the pawn and white is winning. Oh, and by the way, it's white actually, is winning. Yes, white is completely Whoa. better here. And so, this is not what is going to happen. Rook is come to f2. Pragnananda is thinking because the f6 pawn is hanging. He has to figure out what to do. And I think we are going to be back very shortly because we have a guest joining in in our studio here, one of the players, and we will look over his game and also get his thoughts on the other game. Join us in a bit.
Welcome back. We have Grandmaster Vincent Kaimer with us. Vincent, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, a solid result today, a yeah. draw. We want to look at your game, which happened today. But before that, we have some big action going on in Pragnananda's board against Parham. Can we get your thoughts on what's happening? Yeah, I mean, I just saw the opening and thought that at first maybe Prague got into some unpleasant position, but he found some very interesting ideas. And yeah, feeling wise, I thought White like achieved something when the light squared bishops came off the board. Mm. Because I felt like this bishop on e2 was not doing much, and th on the other side, this bishop one of seven was a kind of beautiful piece. But of course, it was just like looking at the position, and now, I mean, there are no immediate problems, I think, for black. So now we. Uh, okay, yeah, here this looked kind of. You, you thought nice here for that black, yeah. For black, it yeah. is good. Yes, all these weaknesses. Yes, here. yes, of course. And this knight on h3 is a really poor piece. Yeah, like with knight on f3, things would be different, but somehow I didn't think that exchanging. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I mean, ah, you thought bishop c4 was not needed. Yeah, but I understand. Yeah, because like he doesn't want to give away probably the knight, and this way he can keep both knights. So it's I think it's just a very weird position, because there are the weaknesses, but you can't really win anything immediately. And of course, long term you have some issues on the king side as black. So mm. it's not easy. And and Parham has actually not much counterplay now, but that f6 move is yeah. what he's banking on. And that he managed to get in this game uh, when Prague pushed this pawn to b5, which Amruta was not a very big fan of this move. She said, like, was it needed? Uh, and suddenly f6 came in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, again, the position is just very complicated. But yeah, now knight h6, I'm pretty sure. Or queen h4, actually. Queen h4, also the move, yeah. This is, this is actually the live board right yeah, now. Yeah, so after queen h4. Oh, he went back knight d7. Yes, he played knight d7. Queen h4, and then you are trying to sort of uh, create play on the king side. Yeah, Rook g3. Probably, yeah. yeah. Maybe knight d6 anyway. Yeah. And I will. Because I think I can't really take on. Maybe I can take on f6. I thought it's not so good because knight f6, knight f6, rook f6, rook f6, rook f6, knight e8 forces queen trade, and I thought this has to be good for black. But Ah, but yeah. here maybe. There's something else, yeah. I mean, it's queen f6, it's but queen. it's nothing dramatic. Yeah, it's for to play for draw. draw. Yeah, I yeah. think for Parham, a draw might be pretty okay, no? After well, this, this position, I don't think he will be happy with a draw. I mean, really? objectively, I think it might be fine, but if you ask him, he will not say it's fine. So I'm pretty sure he will not like a draw here. Yeah, I think we all know Parham is that yes. guy who wants yeah, to yeah. win at all costs. No, yeah, I like mean, like if you give him such a position, he will try yeah i mean and it's, i think it's not unreasonable to try here i mean he also does it sometimes when it's not that reasonable but here he really has also reason to try like just this knight h6 knight six queen h4 it's kind of difficult for black to make a move right right i think this is of course on the other side you also have no real threat yeah so it's kind of a difficult situation for both players but i think it's i mean knowing param he will not like try to liquidate this for sure mm. Because like otherwise, I think Queen H4 is a very, very natural move. You know, uh, Vincent, we made a sort of a comparison today. Tell us if this makes sense to you. We said that Parham is like Mikhail Tal, who likes to attack, and Prague is a lot like Viktor Korchnoi, who is very accurate in his defense. So Tal had a very bad score with Korchnoi, and do you think that is a very valid uh, sort of a comparison or not really? It's difficult to say because I think Parham is not not that much a sacrifice kind of guy, but the initiative. Yeah, so for him, I think initiative is like where he's best at. For Prak, yeah, I mean, he's kind of like the all round rounder with precision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I would say. I think it's very hard to like give him one specific yeah strength, but at the same time, you'll also not find like real weakness. Yeah, so that's mm -hmm. kind of I think. For Parham, he's much more like you can you can yeah. kind of categorize him, yeah, but not so easy easier, to yeah, do exactly. for Prague. But Got it. yeah, okay, exactly. I didn't play Queen H four. It's he played Knight at six. Yeah, he's coming to okay, F five. Knight six will be played rather quickly, I would assume. I mean, so Prague is thinking unless yeah. there's something like, but no, I don't see. I mean, Knight D two, Rook E three. Mm. Oh, yeah, Knight D two feels so wrong. I, can't imagine him actually playing this. But yeah, I mean, it feel it's play 
the Baldwin move. And yeah, but <laughs> it feels wrong. <laughs> yes, it looks scary. You're bringing your knight into the camp, and then f5 is a bit weak. And yeah, this is. I mean, it's just a very weird situation that the rook e3 may be. Knight f5 is not even a threat, yeah? Because like even if you take on d4, e4, you will get a ah. pox. So basically, there's no real threat oh, even that's at the true. moment. That's true. Which is very weird. Yeah, you have this hanging knight on d2 and knight f5 is in the air, but still it's not nothing dramatic mm. yet. So, but okay, this is just. I think I would. I'm pretty sure. Like if I was black, I would play knight d6 rather quickly, like a lot they, it, to somehow defend this f5 square. Yeah, this really feels like. Yeah, I should not. I mean, also the time situation doesn't really allow for, like, some fancy business. So True. I think. True. And they have to still make ten more moves in this time control. Yeah, I mean, although maybe if he just wants to draw, he can try to just go knight d two, knight c four. Yeah, that's Prague. Ah, I mean. that's. But that's I don't think even Prague would go for it. No, but okay, knight six, queen h four. You, you really have to find the move. Yeah, it's knight not. Knight d six, queen h four. I mean, queen e6 would come to my mind simply to get out of this kind of pin. Yes. But, but yeah, suddenly it's getting a bit risky for yeah, white, uh, for black as well. Yeah, there's simply no next move. Yeah, I mean, what's your next move? C5, b4. <laughs> okay, but c5, you give me the d5 score. Yeah, mm. I think you'll regret. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it you'll looks regret. dangerous. So, of course, knight e2 in that sense then has some justification for sure. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Vincent, for get, giving your thoughts here. Uh, it gives us this sort of human touch of uh, Super GM analyzing it. Uh, uh, before we go to your game, one more game just going on here. You think that black is very comfortable here or? Yeah, now for sure. Yeah. Mm. I mean, the king will probably have some issues. Some on time. h2, yeah. yes. I mean, simply white's problem is that, I mean, I would love to push c5. If I get c5, I'll yes. basically be winning, but I will never get to push c5 because this knight on d5, I mean, this is kind of a nice piece, but also very stupid mm. in a way. Yeah? This, this knight is like that, looking yeah. beautiful, but doing nothing. Yeah, it's kind of very stupid uh -huh. there, actually. So, yeah, um, it feels very dangerous. Like even something like e4, d4, bishop d5, c d5, f4, and all the dark squares is something that I'm thinking about. Sorry, uh, uh, like king g1? Yeah, e4. e4, which is probably not very good, but it's like has some... And f4, I know yes. king is on g1 already, yeah? He, he played king g1 ah, now. okay, no, no, he I played played back to Then my idea doesn't make any oh, sense. Oh, that's anymore. why you were using... Yeah, yeah. Ah, that's I why he moved his king to yeah, g1. Yeah, I wanted to play e4 take and take when you have an f4 and use this diagonal, but of course now this is... Now he really, went back. Yeah. But now uh, there is this h3 pawn which is slightly soft and can fall in yeah, some lines. Yeah, but I think b5 will be brutal, yeah? B5. Oh, b5. And then bc and you you will get e4 as well. And okay, probably something like queen d2 has to be played. Because then after bc4, dc4, at least d4 is hanging. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it's not a good position for sure. Got it, got it. Also so very low on time, yeah? Like on seconds already. White. Yeah, 37 seconds. Yeah, How yeah. many moves are there? Okay, they, so they have to make 10 more moves. Yeah, Ooh, this that's is, tough. This is not that's at not all good. easy. This is, and we have two results today. Nodirbek and uh, Vidit drew. Okay. I think uh, Vidit was trying to press with that extra pawn, yeah, but it was but never really... Yeah, opposite color bishops are just very yeah, drawish. Unless Nodirbek yesterday, yeah, he... Okay, but this was too much already, yeah? This is... I mean, he, not he like you, you're guaranteed the draw, but yeah. yeah. So this was an easy uh, draw here between yeah. them. And then um, Bartel versus uh, uh, Richard. Oh, no. Bartel is now fine. Yeah, He was always fine or? Yeah, he was always okay, but it, it felt like uh, yeah, Rapport no. was had this d4 move which he played here. Uh, and that was the, I think, a nice moment in this game. He pushed yeah. this pawn, but then yeah, now it looks it like just it will just be a draw, yeah. That's what it feels like. So yeah, this this will end in a yeah. draw. Also rather soon, I would assume, yeah. This is not, not much left. And Vincent, in your game, we, we saw it uh, right out of the opening. I think you had a very solid position. You also played this against uh, someone before we were checking the same line. Yeah, this I had against Pretke, but yeah, he played Pretke. bishop a2. This ah. was different. I mean, it's a very different approach, basically. Bishop a2 is... 
it was a very interesting idea, which also then Nepo used in Vikan Z to beat Ding. Yeah, mm. with Bishop A2. I mean, this, this in game. Bishop C3 or? Oh. No, no, here. Castles and Bishop A2. Basically, there's both moves. Bishop C2 is like the main move that everybody normally plays, but Bishop A2. It is like some very interesting idea because at some point then White started to play with h3 and g4. <coughs> yeah, basically you need this bishop for your attack and he won a very nice game, Nepo and Vike. <coughs> so, yeah, but bishop c2 is the like classical positional approach. And yeah, knight d2, I'm not exactly sure like about the move orders here. If I can play b4 or d5 already here. But, but you just kept it very solid? Yeah. I did, mean did you know the game Aronian uh, with the white piece? Schweritz. Aronian Schweritz actually reached the same position here after take, mm -hmm. take. And Not he went knight g3. Yeah, knight g3 felt more natural, yeah. But the game was knight g3, b4, b4. Bishop, bishop d2. Yes. And then bc, bc. Uh, and then so at some point rook Aronian rook went rook a4, rook h4, like ah, a little well, creative. Yeah, I'm not, it might have been a bit dangerous actually if he played like perfectly here, but I think the way it went in the game it was also interesting. Yeah? He put yes. his bishop on b3 and was just trying to kind of create an attack with knight h4. And I mean, I played this e4 and also in the game it worked, but I'm not entirely sure it actually works. Mm. I mean, during the game it felt like it But felt okay. e4 was such a sort of a move where you said, I'm sort of clarifying everything with no, this. No, but move. okay, I need to do something, yeah? Like knight f5, I can't just allow. Right. So if I play, let's say. I was thinking bishop, bishop e6, maybe. Okay, but bishop e6 still, I will, t I mean, take. I was take rook e6, sure. and yeah, then and bishop then f8 like back, just trying to hold it. Yeah, it's possible. But also bishop e6, there's always bishop a4, which is annoying. Yes, and then yes. I have to go back, ah, yeah, yeah. and then knight true, f5. True, true. So, I mean. Yeah, I think probably here bishop a4 would have, he would have played. And if I go queen c8 or something, then just bishop c4. Yeah, this is. But I, maybe I can go queen c8 with the idea of bishop c4, bishop e6. But then queen f3 might be an issue. Because then like bishop, bishop c4, d c4, and h6 is mm. hanging. But okay, yeah. And there's always potential for yeah, an Yeah, there's attack. potential, yeah. So in general, like if I, I didn't find the way to completely neutralize the attack, and then I thought it's better to just not even get there. And I was trying to play with e4 some concrete ideas. Yeah, actually here, for, at first I thought I can go rook e4. Yeah, yeah because yes. like if I go knight e4, then simply bishop f7, king f7, rook e4, rook e4, queen f3, and he's yes. up a pawn. Yeah, yes. this doesn't work. Yes. So this is like kind of, natural that this doesn't also work. by the way here there was this move queen h5 yeah that's what i wanted to also show that first i wanted to play rook takes e4 as black not ah. knight e4 because i thought okay the same thing now doesn't work for white yeah rook e4 knight e4 bishop f7 king f7 queen f3 f knight f6 but now simply take and queen h5 and the probably i'm just close to lost so this so was here queen h5 yeah yes. that's it was kind of a shock that i uh, missed yes. this from far but i mean i had this g5 idea already in my mind and um, again, it's very complicated. Um, of course, he has this move knight f5. Yes, but then you just take, right, on f5? Yeah, I think I can just take the two pieces and probably it's fine. But Because at first I thought I can go, first go take knight on e4 three, yes. yeah, to create something, but knight e4 I think is just lost after bishop f7, which is brutal. Because now king f7, queen h5, and because g6 is defended, I will lose everything. My god. Yeah, this is like, it's only one piece attacking, but still it's enough. So, yeah, I think I would have to take on, I mean, also I was considering queen d6 here. Instead of uh, Yeah, now just queen d6 attacking g3, but I think then bishop a4 was annoying me. Knight e4, and now very important move, I thought queen f3, which is like unnatural, but yeah. I mean, yeah. it's very complicated position, but I think also what he was afraid of is that I can simply take on b3, take the two pieces, mm. and then probably there's simply no issue. But it feels like a bit weird with the knights, yeah? Like yeah, they're all loose. Yeah, That's they're the very loose, but maybe it's just fine. And you, when you played g5, yeah. uh, you were a bit tense, like yesterday also you went g5 and okay, it's but different, yes? I mean, yesterday <laughs> I knew the move, today I was just thinking like maybe it's a good idea. And of course, yeah. g4 is kind of draw for yeah? Point. But I also didn't see anything else, so... Yeah, I mean, also, at least the bar didn't make any huge jumps, so it seems like no, it was it kind was of a very a solid game, solid and clean uh, game. Nice, nicely done. Also, a draw at Bartel versus yeah. Richard. But okay, this was... We already expected, yeah? Yes. Uh, while we just... Uh, oh, by the way, this has happened in Prague. Maybe Prague goes for I, a draw, yes? No, 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 but he didn't, yeah? 
like he went knight d2, but not not knight c4. This no, I am queen not e6. Happy. I think this was not a good idea. You think Prague is kind of overstretching this? Yes. What means overstretching? I think he should have like. I don't understand his point of playing knight d2. No. Yeah. Now, because now, now because rook now will rook go to g3, to g3 in one move. Ah, now if you go back, rook g3. Yeah. I mean, it's in one move, so basically we lost the tempo. For for I don't really understand why we lost that tempo. But I understand, yeah, it's also kind of weird. I mean, he's pawn up, he has very nice squares, and so, still he's supposed to just make a draw, but... But you just sense it, yeah, that Parham is coming well, close Parham to your king. Is surely, <laughs> yeah, but, okay, it's kind of principle, yeah, that Parham is normally attacking you if it's right or not, but the question mm. is that if you feel it's right. Yeah, mm. And here probably it was... Yeah, he has a great feeling for dynamics, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. By the and way, he, Vincent, uh, one question to you. Like, yesterday, uh, yeah. you played like this... 23, 20, yeah, I yeah. think Prague was prepared till move 23. Yeah. Uh, till what point were you prepared? I mean, depends, yeah? Like, basically, I didn't check this line before the game. So it's just what I had in my mind from the, the time that I checked it. But of course, like in my file, it's everything, yeah? So basically, just this whole idea I played with bishop f5, rook a8. Just it's take on ct. Yeah, it's the same thing. And it's also, I remembered everything. Basically, if I take, then he has to take my piece back on h5. Queen h5, bishop h5, knight e5, bishop e5, d5, bishop f7. There was some beautiful rook f8 idea that after bishop h5, there was bishop g4. Uh -huh. And then I sacrificed. Wait, let yeah, me let just me, uh, pull up the game because this is too interesting to. Uh, yeah, no, this was. Maybe we don't have that uh, game here. Yeah, but simply, basically, the thing is that because I was not entirely sure after. I spent quite some time for queen g8 because I knew that queen g8 was an idea somewhere, but because I didn't check it oh, before the game, I had to. Yeah, I mean, I knew it's an idea, and then I figured out it's probably here. And then when he played his moves, then suddenly all the memories came back here. Yeah? And I think this was like a slight moment of relief that, aha, uh -huh, now I remember. And that's exactly when I make this huge mistake of not including mm -hmm. dc3, yeah? Because basically, mm -hmm. if I include dc3, we just go home in the next 20 minutes. Yeah, it's just a draw. And like this, it's just immediately lost, which is insane yeah yes. that basically i didn't even get to play a game i just like mixed up one move like it didn't include dc3 and the same thing is just lost instead of draw yeah? you know we were we were discussing yesterday amruta and me on the commentary that you played this uh, sort of freestyle chess <laughs> where you have to think right from move one yeah no, this and was very this different. was yeah. uh, like you knew till move 23 what what would you prefer like which one is okay it's both part of our game no both both yes, you are you like both so yeah no i think it's the best to have both in the chess mm. world yeah like i don't want to stop classical chess but i also for sure like i'm happy to have freestyle chess there as well so that's but also after coming from germany immediately in, a, in some sense this tournament is it like any different there mm, after playing freestyle yeah, yeah because that had required game. different mindset ah, you played bundesliga ah so yes yeah, it played. Of course, it's a bit different, but it actually doesn't feel that different. Oof. This is knight c5, rook f5 ha is, is on rook the board. F Why rook? <laughs> I'm very confused. <laughs> what, what would you have done? I mean, of rook okay, f5? The, I would put the knight on f5 normally, yeah. So I'm like confused. Well, your move is the best according to the no, engine. No, I mean, it's so. just, <laughs> but it's like the move anyone would play in a bullet game normally. Yeah, just put knight on f5 and try to mate. Well, yeah. After knight f5. No, I, it looks horrible. Uh, I don't know why. I think uh, he just probably was going to f5 and maybe rook touched G8. his rook or something like that. Yeah. Rook G8 and, uh, rook, G8, rook G8. Rook, yeah, rook G8 is. Because you did mention that actually this is not hanging. Yeah, yeah, this, this. is the very weird thing. But yeah, rook G8 probably was his problem. But okay, even something like king h2 just doing nothing, it feels so bad. This position is so black. Mm. Like because there's really no next move, yeah? That's kind of the problem. I mean, you can even go rook e2, but then knight c4 still, I don't really want to take on d4, I think, yeah? Even though it's not like a fork anymore, but this pawn is just, yeah, yeah, just go back. And yeah, this pawn would become very yeah. strong. Yeah, so rook f5 is understandable, but now probably if, the, if you find some brilliant defense, it seems okay, yeah? What is the defense? What is white's threat actually? Okay. Rook h5, that's knight f5. Yeah, that's very. Oh, rook h5, knight rook h5, f5. Rook h5, knight very, f5. Very, very simple, very, yeah, very clear. It's, it's basically clear that rook h5 is going to be in the next move pretty much no matter what, I think. Mm. 
there's like if you don't play b4 or take on e4 there's not not really a way that he's not gonna play rook h5 i think and and vincent he has just one minute 50 seconds how many moves seven moves oh, but that's okay that's okay that's okay Aha, uh -huh, knight d3, rook h5, knight f4. Yeah, that's interesting, Amruta, to bring your... H5. Yeah, I think knight g4 is a problem. Yeah, you can't mm. really defend f6 then. What did he do, uh, Prag? B4. B4? What? No. Prag is <laughs> Prague is playing on the queen side here. No, but it's... Yeah, I understand, because rook h5 is no huge threat. You can just play something like... Okay, even ignore, and the next move just defend f7, but here it... The Prague is like saying now your B2 is uh, weak. Yeah, but B2 is important actually. Yeah? Yes, because then the A pawn becomes very strong. and So it's basically he's forcing Parham to really mate him. Yes. But maybe he will get <laughs> mated. And, and, <laughs> and Parham is like, okay, I anyway wanted to mate you for many moves. So this yeah, is... So rook, but okay, rook h5, we can take B2 or not, because it feels very wrong to do so, but yeah, it's wrong move. Okay. Take. <laughs> you can actually take one. Wow. And knight f5. No, but just queen just f7. Just queen f7. Ah, okay. Yeah, nothing. So you hang in there. Okay, so basically what's white's move? Because yeah. then that's difficult here to find a good move here. Like if rook h5 is so bad, then... And also it's very difficult to kind of see some retreating moves, like rook f2 with the idea of knight f5. I mean, when you put your rook there, right? No, so you think rook f2 is good or...? Yeah, I mean... it. Uh, the engine says it's the best move. Okay, so, so rook f2 and rook b2, then what's happening? Rook f2 is unnatural, no, because last move we played rook f5. And then put this rook here somehow and... Okay, but this is nearly this is impossible. Not, this is not possible to I fight. think he will not. What's the second line? Uh, instead of rook f2? Yes, yes, there are, I think there are several moves. One is queen g4. Okay, he will also not play queen g4, I think. No, then practice okay. Is okay. But if rook f2, then Parham is winning. I mean, rook g3 is... Queen h2, rook b2, rook g3 is possible. I prefer... King h2, rook b2... Oh, that's also good. Yeah, if he finds this, I think he will win with white. Because this will just... But why did you play king h2 first? Like, why did you okay, not... Okay, because e4 is hanging after rook ah. g3. Yeah? So, in any way, so I will be in something like rook c2, rook c1. So, I'm making, like, a very so beautiful prophylactic... Oh, move, that king h2 is actually a great I move. think that's more like, you know, because... Parham is kind of the hardcore attacker, but he can find such moves. Mm. But it's, of course, very, very difficult. But, you know, looking at the moves that Engine suggests, this is the one I would say is humanly most likely. Yeah, it's like a very high-class move, yes. King H2. No, I like, like this. Rook F2 is simply kind of stupid, but works. But King H2 really has soul. That's Correct. It's improving your position. Humanly, you just feel you have done something useful there. That's a bit yeah, but Parham also not going low on time. No, I mean, this game is still very much three regards. Mm. This is... I mean, and Gukesh, just to check. G Gukesh, actually, after King G1, they played so many moves. He went Bishop F7, didn't go B5. Bit of a surprise there. Ah, oh, so he's just... <laughs> he's just waiting. And then finally went B5, Rook E2, Rook C8. Mm -hmm. And actually, Thaidai 1 now sacked an exchange. Maybe... Helps him, yeah, in some yeah, ways. For, uh, I mean, surely helps him. I mean, position, of course, it's bad, but it's not lost. And this is what we have right now. Okay, but still, it's not. He's not enjoying it. <laughs> he's exchanged he's down, enjoying. and uh, yeah, his Just position. Just queen c4. Queen c4. So I don't understand why Gukesh is thinking. Ah, because rook c4 also works. Bishop d5, queen f6. Okay, then that makes some sense to think. Hmm. Actually, then rook c4 is maybe even more human. Because take bishop d5, there is this queen f6. Yeah. Nice, nicely spotted there. Okay, so Gukesh clearly pressing here and yeah, going back to. Oh, he takes with the rook. Yeah, yeah, it's the human move. Yeah. And now. Uh, because but you don't really want to. We have this f5 weakness and you don't really want to put the queen away from the king. Yes. Of course, there's some. I mean, it's very close to getting some mate on with queen h5 and g6, but it doesn't work, so I think. Oh yes, but it's if kind this of close, yeah, at least here. Like if a queen could go to h4, it will be made after queen e5, yeah. But yeah, no, of course, there's no threat here. Yeah, it's just about that. Yeah, just move the rook. Yeah. No, so Gukesh is uh, clearly doing very well, but the prog position is. Pra oh, ooh, he, played he played queen okay, g4. No, it's just such a beast. Yeah, queen g4 is wow. Oh. 
Okay, but what's the idea? Let me understand. Like rook b2 and what? Yeah, let's have uh, Prag and uh, Parham's video here and let's see. Ah, no, simply rook g3, yeah? Okay, it's very easy. He, he just Oh, wants I was just, yeah, blind. And of course, queen g4 is very, they're just mating. Okay, so rook b2, rook g3, rook. Oof. Can rook you show this? Rook b2. Rook b2, yes. Rook g3. Yeah. Rook b7. And rook f6 is mate, I think. Yes, oh, G8. so pretty. So pretty. Yes. What a deflection. If the queen takes on G4, mate rook on G4, G4, yeah. Oh, queen G4, I think rook G4, yeah. It will be the. Oh, you can take on F8, but this also. Yeah. Very cool. Wow. Yeah, now this. Okay. No, but then he's in. Okay. He's in trouble. He's down to 18 seconds. You can literally feel it. Yeah, that yeah. Prague is. I think is he's. Yeah, this is very bad. No, this is difficult now. No, the way in which Parham has sort of viewed this yeah, together. Yeah, this is his. This is his this forte. Is, yeah. This is he goes rook b8 oh, back. First line, wow. It's good, yeah, according to the engine. But it's just 80 seconds on the block. Oh, but it's natural, yeah, because he wants to defend g7 with the queen and he needs to protect g8. Yeah, so that after rook but g3 he has. Now what? Okay, just queen e7 or queen, or queen d7. d7. Because now we're on f8 there's no mate. But it's is it easy to choose because one, one is, is a good move, the other one is a blunder. <laughs> queen e7 or queen d7. Okay, but queen e7 is also the more natural move. Mm. So because I you keep f6 under but control. The only reason why queen d7 even comes to mind is because you still have this stupid knight on d2 that's kind of hanging in hanging, the air. Hanging, yes. But, yeah, queen e7. Oh, he blunders! He goes queen yeah. e7. Okay, but still they have so they are so low on time. But why is this a blunder is not so clear. No, absolutely not. Not so I clear. Wouldn't too, <laughs> I wouldn't be... I, I wouldn't be too worried about this yet. I mean, they're, they're going to make a lot of mistakes with that time mm. and this position. This is, I mean, they're still playing extremely high level. It's simply that, okay, we're sitting here with an engine and thinking, <laughs> oh, it's so easy and nice. Yeah. So no, 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 no one's okay, thinking it's if, easy. If yes, we sir. were there, we would probably... For sure, yeah. for sure. Mm. Okay, also, it's there's something, there are some ideas. Let's say if, if you ever play queen h4 and rook h5 again, then you might get into some trouble with queen a7 even. Yeah, the queen can also come from this side. And Ooh. knight f1, so. Wow, these e7s. Yeah, they're wow. like very. Yeah, very counter attacking ideas. ideas. But okay, queen h4 seems to be the right move. And yes. But also, yeah, king h2 is kind of brutal, yeah, because then he has. I mean, still, I think playing this against Parham, he should be the favorite with white. Also, simply because the position is better, but. How many moves? Okay, only four. Four, moves. four more moves to make in oh, like two If this minutes. was after move 40, Prague is would really have some tr issues. But I think as long as yeah, there... Four moves, whatever, whatever happened, happened yeah, yeah, yes. if uh, Prague can, is lot able can to... Happen. But I think if the position stays the same for four more moves, then it will be very tough. Right, right. Time can is the only thing that can help Prague here. But at the same time, defense is also tougher, right, with lesser time. So... It depends, uh, yeah, because at some moment, like attack will switch into you have to find a winning idea, or otherwise you're like yes. nothing made sense. And when you have to prove this with little time, it's also extremely difficult. I so agree. There's this aspect as well, but yeah, I think Queen H4 is. Yeah, I mean because there's no other idea. It yes, F6, just attack F6 with Queen here uh, and the Rook. That's the point, but. But we never then thought the game will turn this way. This way. Yeah, right? I, I mean, I Prague was always uh, the better nice one. nice position, too. But Parham is very, very good at... Actually, also, it's a question. Isn't it? After Queen H4, Rook G6 is a threat already or not? Rook? Oh, yeah, because so if you go Queen E7, there is this more Rook G6 or what? No, no, no. Ah, not. Because you protect F6. Yes. Now, that's not even a question. But without the defending of F6, it might be... Uh, okay, anyway, you have to defend F6. I have, yes, yes, I so have yeah. to do it, so... Oh yeah, queen e7. Did he play? No, he's playing king h2. He's going for king h2. You can just sense it from his yeah, hand. Yeah, but that's also not good for Prague. Oh, king h1! Yeah, he doesn't want to be in the, in the check, check of the knight. In fact, yeah, much better, no, practically? Oh yes, that makes okay, sense. He didn't so want knight f1 and to come with a check if the king went to h2. The question is, like, if engine says now queen e7 is best move, we can be pretty sure that Prague will not play it. Yeah, because uh, if he would yes. have would wanted to go to e7, he would have done it the move before. Yeah. Like for me, I would love to get something like a3. Yeah. A3 as black. Yeah, because you open up this b file. Yeah, if you. Oh, he makes a terrible blunder. Like the engine just goes. 
like five, five seconds, seconds he had on the clock. Oh no, but this is yeah, he just lost. Okay. Oh look at this. Yeah, okay, this is and over now. Yes. Ninety six, and he just blundered the f six pawn there. Oh, what a big blunder! Yeah, this oh, look at him, he's so disappointed. Lost. Look at him. In, in one move, it just shifted. No, but okay, it shifted before already. <laughs> yeah, the problem was. Yeah, basically, the problem was that Parham got his initiative, and I think Prague probably missed the moment to make a draw. Because, like I was <laughs> telling you, yeah, he's not going to play for a draw, Parham, that's for sure. No, you kind of uh, judged everything very precisely. I was not very but sure. It's also like the, uh, yeah. the way that things go in the game. Yeah, basically, Prague has a nice position, and suddenly he has to, he's on the defensive side, and there are quite many things he has to consider, and it's very difficult. Wow. Vincent, there are some brilliant insights there and Parham just wins this game. He becomes the sole leader of the tournament, two out of two. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can see Prague completely... Yeah, I also suffered to him already. <laughs> so. uh, with Parham, yes, in the Bundesliga yeah, yeah. game. So. That was a very crucial one. Uh, Baden, yeah, Baden, kind of, Heim. but not too much because we had no, not a sing, not really a chance to win even a single game, and even yes. like a four-four wouldn't have helped us. But of course, it didn't help that I lost in that match. True, true. Tomorrow is the revenge. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow are you yeah, taking yeah. Parham? Oh, taking. But at least I'm white. That's improving <laughs> life. And, yeah. and I, I think uh, you now. I mean, you always knew him very well, but kind of tomorrow is going to be very exciting with all this background you know you joining us here we seeing Parham's game so we are very excited Vincent uh, are you enjoying in Prague uh, this tournament not like result wise but um, just here the environment uh, so many things happening the festival and so on yeah sure I mean I'm here for the third time in a row now so I mean first time I played the challengers group which back then was like very strong yeah, and that year we played with Nodirbeck and Niemann were all in that group so it was like extremely strong and last year was also a nice experience but yeah it's always a very tough tournament because you always have a lot of like ambitious players in the field it's not like you know everybody really wants to win and you can feel it you need a lot of energy to play well here brilliant well uh, Vincent thank you for uh, spending time with us and taking us through these games it was very enjoyable and good luck for the next round. thank you thank you we'll take a short break and on returning we will be following Gukesh's game against uh, Gyuen Thai Daiwan and maybe we'll have Parham joining us to sh take us through his game Black. 
welcome back everyone amruta what a day of chess we have had a game that had decisive result and three draws yes and at the last moment in parham's game everything changed but as vincent said it was not the last moment yeah. the pressure was building maybe later we should go through it again but uh, right now how many games are going There's after 40 moves there's just one game in masters going on between gukesh and yuan thai dai wan and as you rightly pointed out i would love to go over the game of parham against pragna nanda but i'm also uh, thinking that parham will join us and we can go over the game with him oh that so, would be wonderful so let's wait for him so and in the meantime can we look at gukesh's game yes that would be the best thing to do let's go to gukesh's game this is the live board position that we have right now after move 40 both of them have got 30 minutes on the clock uh, thai dai wan could actually have taken the pawn on d4 here this was hanging he could have picked it up and although gukesh is an exchange up it's not going to be an easy thing to win such a position because the knight is well placed uh, the pawns are very solid so it's it's not so simple oh yeah what's the plan because i would love to have the bishop on that h1 a8 diagonal it looks beautiful you mean here yes for black the black bishop yes but then if you look at the pawns you feel like you want to create a passer but you can't you mean for white no for black <laughs> where, where i'm talking about gukesh is an exchange up right yeah, yeah, so yeah, how so is he you ask no, me how is he going to win it's not easy but you know in the game uh thai dai one actually listen to what you said that he didn't want the bishop to come on this diagonal perhaps and so he pushed his pawn to b5 stopping bishop c6 but bishop c8 you can go oh gukesh doesn't care about that yeah gukesh goes for doubling of the rooks on the c file maybe he wants to come in here to c1 and uh, oh what a nice idea because rook c1 and bishop b5 at some point could be a big pressure absolutely so if you play rook takes d4 that would be a terrible blunder because rook c1 and now when the queen moves up you have bishop b5 and that is game over so clearly now that pawn cannot be taken but then uh, i guess the idea is to just play a4 no knight d3 you don't want to stop rook c1 possible to to put your knight here on d3 square um uh, actually i was a little scared that the rook is entering the back rank yeah. but uh, computer hates the moon knight d3 no, the very thing much is, the thing is that maybe then the bishop can come to c4 and that is also something that you have to take care of that bishop e6 to c4 and when i have my knight on f4 that is not possible because here bishop e6 means that i can already take uh and then take on d4 that is perhaps the the easiest way to go here so for now it seems like this game is in that phase where both players have time and it can um you know either sort of equalize for thai dai one or gukesh can just sort of win it because this maybe one or two moves are very crucial ones what happens Honestly I didn't expect that this would be the game which will go on after 40 minutes. Uh, true, true. By the way, he's playing something it doesn't feel like he's going a4. I think knight but then he won't go knight d3. No, he's not going for knight d3. It felt like he was going to king. touch the rook somehow. Or maybe the king removing it from the back rank. Can he consider a move like king h2? Rook c1. we yeah, need to no, but it looks it so looks, bad it doesn't look so good bad. it doesn't look good i agree with you there. completely i was i was also thinking if we can just simply go here and take with the queen on d4 but these trades are actually in uh, black's favor oh, oh my god just, just as, as i was talking about it just as i said that this looks in black's favor he has done it and i think for gukesh take take and now next move maybe just even g5 pushing the knight away Where will this knight go? Oh, he's he's not even thinking. Gukesh was almost about to. Yeah, Gukesh is very happy. Gukesh is very happy. He trades the queen instantly. Rook takes d4, and now I I guess he will think because there are many possibilities for him here. 
there is a move like rook c1 that can come in g5 is possible amruta not to forget that you can reroute your bishop from e8 to f7 so okay i think i get got it very oh, wrong very quickly you know he does it he just simply goes bishop e8 what is he yeah, how is the he back rank, so quickly Sagan, the back rank is a very important factor in this game uh, you don't need pass pawns or anything. Yeah. That bishop and a back rank is a no, very but, good but advantage. No, but you can always like move your king up, right? King g2 and Still, get your bishop Still the back rank out. is weak because the light squares are weak. And that knight on f4 is not permanent. That's one big problem when mm. they can be attacked by the pawns. Mm. They can be pushed away. I'm actually a bit surprised, Amrita. Let's imagine as white, I just move my king up. As you said, back rank is an issue. Uh, Maybe the the problem G5, here. G five, G four later at yeah, some point. Yeah, either G five, but also Rook D seven. And what you essentially want to do as Black is trade Rooks. Oh and no, then, I would not consider such a move. Really, it feels like Rook C one. You want to go Rook C one? Yes, that's possible. I mean, of course, it looks very active. But when you trade one pair of Rooks, when you have two Rooks, opponent has one, and uh, you are exchange up. If you trade one pair of Rooks, it just kind of. Completely neutralizes your opponent's any counterplay. Now it's mm. like sort of one-way traffic. Ah, and now you want to collect the pawns, yeah, the yeah. a3. Now the rook, the rook just rook enters just... and has oh. no uh, no one to stop it. This is a very good point. So, just exchange that one pair of rooks, and there is no counterplay. And I think that's what uh, that's why Gukesh went bishop e8. It was for actually preparing rook d7 to trade a pair of rooks. But it can be misjudged because the idea seems like g5 and bishop h5, that sort of. Yeah. Something. But let's see what Guen does. He's also actually. I'm. I'm a bit surprised, Amruta, that with getting 30 minutes additional on the clock, uh, the players are actually rushing to make their moves. They are not taking <laughs> enough time to think. I'm playing very Guen, quickly. Yeah. By the way, Guen, when I have to say his name, like, do I have to say Guen or Thai or Dai or Wan? I'm, I get confused which one to use. Well, uh, for one name. I don't know. I, I generally uh, call him as uh, Thai Dai Wan. Uh, and of course, Guen is also possible. Because uh, in India, we have two names and name and surname. So we yeah. are a little bit confusing. I, I think we should definitely ask someone or maybe ask him. Uh, about this, but on our screen it's written Van Guen. Okay. Um, so Bishop E8 played. And now Thai Dai Wan is thinking here. Yeah, wasn't it such a beautiful time Vincent had joined in, shared yeah. his thoughts about all the games, also his own game. Yesterday, we were so curious about the game with Pragnananda. We would really wanted to hear his thoughts. Yeah. And no, it was, it was fantastic. Amazing. I mean, one of the most level headed people out there, Vincent yeah. Kaimar. And also uh, uh, his uh, trainer, Peter Leko, a uh, well known commentator. So, you know, Vincent has these <laughs> elements in him when he's talking. Yes. No, he's. he's and also, not just. Uh, you know, I, I mean, when you spend a lot of time with your trainer, like Peter Leko, uh, you know, the storytelling, the many of the things, the way in which you speak also rubs off. And that just shows in the way Vincent speaks. Uh, it's enjoyable to, to talk to him. Uh, and Thai Daiwan about to make a move, puts his bishop on d3, which is logical. But then rook d7, right? What you showed. Yes. Bishop f5, I rook think. d4, bishop c8. Bishop b5. No, but Amruta, you just missed that there is a check on c1. Oops. In between. So if you if you go here and Blunder. you take this, I will interpose it with a check first and then pick up your rook. So that doesn't work. You are always here to find my mistakes. <laughs> no, no, I no. like it. No. <laughs> <laughs> you should be here to find my mistakes, I get what no. That's your job here. Yes, You're so lucky. <laughs> that's true. But I I mean I can actually uh, be very very sure that Gukesh goes rook d7 here. I mean, uh, maybe it's not the right time to. If he goes of, rook d7, uh, you get a chocolate. <laughs> not a chocolate. I don't need anything, Amruta. But I think Gukesh really goes rook d7 because uh -huh. uh, that was his plan with bishop e8, and with bishop d3, it becomes even more uh, obvious that you do this because if the rook moves away, there is g5, and you just lose the bishop.
and i'm i'm uh, actually by the way as of now parham is the sole leader two yes. out of two yes. and on one and half nodir back it's only nodir back and if gukesh wins, wins right then now he then join. he would also join one and half yeah. so it's a very important game for gukesh he has 29 minutes van goen has 14 minutes after 40 moves were over gukesh went out he got some tea i guess maybe gukesh is like okay i am uh, going towards 18 i should start drinking coffee <laughs> <laughs> i'm in europe i i uh, yeah you are right i mean i have never seen him drinking coffee as such uh, but at the same time amruta these are long games and um, generally players bring with them some things to keep up their energy for 5 5 and 1/2 hours um, and also this 30 minutes increment after move 40 really helps you if you have a position like what gukesh has you know advantage you can convert it very smoothly you never really botch it up because mm. of time trouble so it's a very good time control i think much uh, many people say that this should be the time control for even uh, world championships or candidates you know it seems like the oh yeah for sure i mean it's just too long of a game 15 the current minutes one, and yes it has 90 minutes plus 50 minutes plus 20 minutes right Or yeah i mean magnus showed his end game skills because of that <laughs> but yes in the game 6 uh, against nepo true true actually i think gukesh is considering whether he should uh, defend his pawn here with g6 or should he go rook d7 but let's try to think what is he he considering maybe he is thinking that there is a move like rook a4 if you go g5 then the bishop takes on f5 you know attacking here but see rook c1 check because rook... if you take this i can take take and then maybe just chop this there could be some drawing chances here because you've taken lot yeah, of pawns yeah you w- wouldn't like to enter into this but maybe you go check as you rightly pointed out king g2 and now there could be an idea of no i am i was saying rook taking here because yeah. then you can take this guy and also then there's a check threat here but bishop here. b5 rook takes a7 yeah then you are saying that you have bishop c6 check yeah check here and this looks like the king as you said this one uh getting very very bad yeah king h2 rook h1 mate was there but but this can be this is what i think gukesh is calculating because in such lines this is hanging and you really don't want to get into a position where you are you calculating because yeah. i think for him this position is something which doesn't need much calculation there you yes. have it rook, rook d7, d7 on the board gukesh doing it very carefully trading pieces when ahead in material is a well known theme and he's doing it in uh, in the right way uh tied one is rook moving his rook maybe. it seems oh rook, rook b4. b4 he was ready with this idea he, rook b4 but now amruta this is getting sharp and this is very interesting because rook b4 you're going to go g5 now i think as gukesh you want to go g5 i would say that first do you want to add rook c1 check or not king g2 and then you want to but i think you can play that at any point right so let's go g5 first and the same thing bishop f5 yes Pawn. but then the rook is not on a4 which is a great advantage you give rook c1 check here mm-hmm. yeah rook c1 i was thinking amruta maybe rook d1 check and now you have two moves going up king g2 king, king g1 king h2 let uh, sorry king h2 king g2 king h2 and rook c5 and the, this is hanging and this is hanging oh what a nice double attack rook c5 is a cute move yeah. in fact wherever you go right if you go king g2 still the same problem you're losing a piece yes i think the same issue with rook c5 persists so, so you the, can't but play the, bishop f5 but the question now is amruta that if you were if you had gone check with the other rook Mm-hmm. Then after I play my king to let's say g2, you don't have rook d5. Yeah. So that's the reason why you have to start with this check. And for Gukesh, this is all uh, calculation, hardcore calculation, where he has to play g5 
attack the knight, knight cannot move because this is hanging, only logical move is to take on f5, then you give a check, king goes to g2 or h2, you go rook c5 and you are basically winning a piece here mm. and then you are a rook up. And then it's resigned. I mean, if Gukesh plays g5, he, no, no, he wait, would wait, have wait, calculated. Wait, wait, there's more, Amruta. It's not over. Bishop g4, hitting the rook. So this is not easy. Oh, this is actually very complicated now. Right? It's not even easy to calculate this. So Thai mm. one is actually... I think as Guk you know Gukesh doesn't shy away from such challenges so maybe he is calculating g5 but maybe a very smart thing to do is just play g6 and no, say No why g6 I was thinking of rook c5 prophylaxis Yes but uh, then you Yeah maybe I've supported f5 my threat is very straightforward with g5 but you need to now. I keep my knight so there then maybe you have White has some stability. Some. I'm not saying like a lot, but. But I mean, it's not as. Uh, yes. Like you still so no, need like to be very G5 careful. So G5 is like you either win or uh, it's like it's a very very forcing line. Yeah. So you cal. Uh, let's let's uh, continue our journey on this calculation. <laughs> Check. Bishop f5. King and let's G2. try to see where what Gukesh is thinking after King g2. Do you think Rook c5? Is the first consideration yes. for him? Yes, because otherwise the rook is hanging. And uh, what else? No, like you could go rook b a. Oh, you can go rook b a. Like Amruta, another plan is to just take on b5. No, he won't give the b5 pawn. So let's say a4 here. No, but knight is hanging. Ah, knight is hanging. I forgot. Yeah, so about that's not that. easy. So let's say rook c5. Then I go bishop g4. That's also one line to consider. Rook d2. And then if you save the knight, let's say knight. I don't know, e6 perhaps. Yeah. Then there is rook c2 which has to be considered. But also rook takes b5 and uh, bishop is coming to c6 next. Yeah, rook b5, if I exchange one rook yes. as you have showed, I am very yes. happy with that a pawn there yes. because that should become a passer. See? He goes he g6, g6, you yes. were completely right. He didn't, ah. because when you are winning, you don't want to take undue risks actually. But... Uh, you know, an engine would have easily uh, played g5 here. Mm. But that's the difference between an engine and human. Hey, is he now threatening rook c3? Um, yes, maybe rook c3 is possible. I think thai dai one will just go h4 first. Just Oh, he goes a4. He's also playing quickly. Huh? He's not... He's not uh, waiting. He has 14 minutes on the clock. Because I thought rook c3 was a direct threat. Mm. That's the point. Well, even now rook c3, why not? Because the bishop, where is it going to go? Yeah. And at some point, it's clear that the bishop, black bishop wants to be on that beautiful long light square diagonal yes that's for sure it wants to come in here uh, a4 and you you said rook c3 but then where where does this bishop go because now i'm threatening to take so bishop f1 maybe bishop e2 <laughs> possible moves but then rook d2 rook d2 rook c2 of course, not something which you can enjoy after 40 moves. <laughs> Sitting there alone, uh, one board for masters, I don't know how many for oh, other. We can actually check what's happening in the challengers while we are looking at this. Oh, you have the game Yes, here? let's let's look at the challengers. We have a few results. Let's see first. Let's do a roundup of five boards five if we boards. can get for the challengers. That would be beautiful. All, all the games are over actually for them. So we have again only one decisive game today. And so we had, uh, this is the Masters by the way, and in the Masters we had three draws, one win for Maksudlu, who we are still waiting for, I hope he's, he's there around. 
or did he leave because <laughs> we got to know that he was Maksud analyzing Maksud played a tactical idea <laughs> <He's> like <laughs> Maksud not only escaped Pragnananda but he also escaped the interview um, but yes no I think uh, as far as I know Maksud he loves analyzing we also yeah. saw in Chennai like whatever would happen for many many um, uh, hour in a way hour I think they would analyze yes he and Aronian actually analyzed a lot after their game but uh, yeah, Maksudlu is the only winner today. Also, and he, you know, in Bundesliga where he played the three games, one of the games he lost with Do- Dotov. Oh, he lost there with And Dotov is such a famous, of course, you yes. would know him, such a player, strong, 60-year-old now, but a uh, classy player. So, uh, they analysed and it's always nice to analyse with such top-class grandmasters and players mm. who were in their era, top at the top, Without using yes. the engine. Dotto also, I think, was a very well-known trainer, not ah. just a player. Uh, so yeah, here we have Korobo drew with uh, Rebek. He was the leader of the tournament because he was the only one who won yesterday with Vaishali. Vaishali has had a very bad start to this event. He's lost both her games. She's Today lost she her. lost to Edis Gurel uh, in what looks like a brutal attack on her uh, king. Uh, and then Santos Latasa drew with Stalmak. Finnek, a very young talent from Czech Republic, very, very uh, strong player, drew with Erwin Lamy. And Rod Stein and Abhimanyu Mishra drew their game. So, this is how uh, the five games were. N- none of the games are going on. I think, in, in fact, we have had less decisive games in Challengers than the Masters. Just two decisive oh, yeah. games in 10, ten uh, Actually, games. Actually, and, and do you also have futures? Just Yes, uh, let's have a look. If you have them. At the, yes, I have the games, it seems. Uh, we have, yeah. we have uh, Sisku and Guntaka still playing. But I think uh, Sisku is winning there on the first board. Just Rook and Bishop. So, like, a lot of material up. Ansh Nerurkar. He has won his game. But look at the time when he won. One hour, 32 minutes. No, the game had. actually ended very quickly, it seems. <laughs> yeah, they, they both were playing very fast. Uh, and that's what happens when you have these youngsters. This is also an opportunity for them to learn. Not just, uh, you know, playing games and all. But how to use their time. They also do interviews after their games. So, like, they are, like, playing a top tournament for their Beautiful. level. And uh, then we have Stara versus Markina. I guess that game is yeah, still white in progress. Is progressing, but Black has such a bad bishop. No, that White will win white that. Will yes, win with that White knight. will win this. Stara will maybe win this. Then we have uh, Bresnina, who won the game. Very nice tactic at the end against Jakubse. Oh, uh, just uh, deflecting the rook. And in the end, uh, there is Peglau who lost to Andre Tamas. Andre is actually the top seed of the tournament. So, this is how the futures section was. Let's go to the game of Gukesh, who is right now, Thai Dai Wan is about to make his move. I don't know. Uh, yeah, they had one move played, both of them, actually. They, w- what did Gukesh do? He went after A4, Rook C, D8. Hmm. He doubled. Yeah, and Thai Dai Wan is thinking. Okay, clearly rook d3 is a direct threat. So, yes. where do you move your bishop? You don't want to go bishop c4 because rook d4 and... Yeah, that's a, that's a nasty pin. Unwanted pin, pin. That's yeah. That's a nasty pin here. Um, but there's, yeah, maybe knight e6 business, mm-hmm. but you have a check. So, uh, instead of bishop c4, maybe bishop e2 makes a lot of sense. Just moving You stop rook d1 as well. Yeah. And then rook d2 with the idea. No, no, Amruta. Now, let's ask our viewers here. What would you play as black? A nice move. Just in the spirit of what we want to achieve. Yes, rook d4. Fantastic. Ah. Just trade the rooks and then otherwise the a4 pawn falls. And I've been very much keen that Gukesh trades rooks. Yeah. Oh, this idea. Just ex- keep exchanging one rook. Oh, he's played bishop c4 because I think Amruta, the main, yes, there will be some kind of a pin here, but it's also the fact that uh, you don't trade rooks. Also, knight e6 does exist to shoe off your rook. 
Like yeah. for Gukesh, he's fixated on exchanging that rook. That's the. But he, 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 yeah. Which is good. Check I mean. King H two, and now Rook D four. Maybe this is how he does it. No, like bring your other rook. Yeah, I was even thinking of Rook C one actually instead of Rook D four. Mm hmm. With the idea of both possibilities, Rook D four and Rook D one. Ah, you also want to sort of attack here. I just want to get this bishop somehow into the game. Uh, it's uh, it's limited by my own pawns on this side and limited by my opponent's pawn on this side. Yeah, that's like the futures. They want to they want to you know become the top players and they are fighting for it. Yes. The bishop on e8. Yes. It will. <laughs> it hopefully it will have a good future there. Uh, the rook on d8 is the challenger, and the rook on d7 is the master. <laughs> But rook d4 is a nice move, and Gukesh has so many. It's like a buffet there. Also, Gukesh is uh, calculating without looking at the board, and this is a very, very typical thing you see uh, in top players that they prefer to calculate without looking at the board many times. And the maximum time, you know, I have seen somebody not looking at the board is uh, Arjun. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't look at his board, or even Ivan Chuk for that matter. Ivan Chuk, even Gelfand in yeah. Aeroflot, he would make a move and he is just walking and then he is thinking. In he fact, walks so fast. Amruta, actually, Amruta, I remember once I was playing in Mumbai, uh, and there was uh, Michael Krasenko who was hmm. playing there, and uh, he would just not sit in his chair. So, like, be it his move, uh, I mean, he would if it is his opponent's move, he's walking. The moment his opponent makes a move, he would come. And he would make his move and get up and sort of walk. And he was all the time thinking. He was all the time thinking about what uh, had to be done in the position. So, right now, Bishop C4, and we're waiting for Gukesh to make a move. Oops. Maybe till Gukesh makes a move, I, I guess we can quickly have a look at Parham, how he won. Because, you know, um, it was very surprising for me that Pragnananda just completely collapsed. Rook f5, he went b4, pawn takes, rook takes. They are able to see. Yes, rook takes, b2 is hanging here. And then... After queen g4, which was a very nice move here by Parham, threatening rook g3 and mate on g7. And if you try to defend it, there's mate on g8. That was his idea. So rook went back. He brought his rook in. Queen d7, which was the mistake uh, according to the engines. And king h1. I think this was the move which completely uh, threw. I don't know if the people are able to see. You are able to see. So only our Prague, meter is Prague actually completely collapsed here uh, by playing his knight to e6. Because the thing was, if you if you notice, this could have been a threat. If you take here, it's a mate on g8. Yeah. But the problem was that uh, there could the queens were getting traded, and so queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, and then this position is kind of equal. <clears throat> But the moment he uh, played rook f6, uh, here knight e6 in this position, suddenly the queens can no longer be traded and so he just took rook f6. It was such a blind spot for Prague and uh, it's just over because e6 is hanging, he can't take here because g8 is made and... Uh, also, the kind of position which he had, he was building up, he had beautiful squares, his knights were superior in so many ways. In 2-3 moves, slowly the shift, the transition, it's hard to believe that white would get such a better position yeah. suddenly. No, the and then at that point of time, you have so less time to even accept that, that you are the one on the defending side. Yes, and time did play a role, but also the way in which Maksudlu uh, kept going. Brilliant. It uh, was such a brilliant yeah. thing today, what we saw. Fantastic. Uh, yes. Because he had only that one thing, f6. True. And he found it. Yes. At the right time, the right he moment. was able to use that. I agree. I agree. And by the way, Gukesh has also found this nice maneuver of first checking with the other rook here to d1 
and then bringing his, uh, as you said, the challenger's rook here, uh, pinning, because now if knight e6, rook then e4. we can go rook uh, no? e4, which seems like a very logical oh, no, move. knight c5, one second, if you go rook e4, yeah. what if knight c5? Ah, you want knight c5. Okay, maybe just go rook d2 then. Oh, or is there bishop f7? By the way, <gasps> by the way, there is, yeah, bishop f7 is just such an epic move, Amruta. Wow. Well spotted because take, take and now there is a pin here and you are losing material by force. But there is an absolutely stunning move here. Let's see if our viewers can find this black to play, not bishop f7, but something totally offbeat. And I think such moves are just so, uh, so difficult to find. The happiness giving moves, yeah? Yeah, it's just uh, impossible, I would say, in a way. But still, let's see. That's a nice way to encourage. <laughs> <laughs> no, somewhere. Uh, huh? uh, producer Ji, if, you, if we can... Uh, Thank you. The move here, which I, by the way, knight e6 has been played. Huh? Oh, it's oh. played. It's played. Okay, if Gukesh plays this, I simply sort of um, end wait, the stream wait, and go away. Uh, like I, <laughs> I, I don't believe him. But have the people over here found it? You should not tell Sagat. Yes. Be patient. Yeah, I'll be this patient like here, but... How much ever time we take, even more than how much longer Vidit played But But no, he might he might make the move. Yeah, yeah. we should... Yeah. I mean, if Gukesh plays it before anybody from the room, that's different. Uh, A5. A5, wow. What's, what's your wow. good name? Uh, Marcus. Marcus has found A5 here, which is such a stunning move. Because... If you take wow. op a saw, it frees up the c6 square, it's mate in 3. Beautiful, man. That is so amazing. Yeah, that's game over. Amazing. So, and if you move the rook, that's gone. Then you, c4 you lose is c4. gone. And then if you take here, now suddenly you don't have op a saw because the move has passed. <laughs> yeah, the rules of chess don't allow it and you lose the piece. <laughs> move to end the game yeah yeah and gukesh will be so happy about it i mean in the whole game he would say a5 i found a5 a5 I will uh, make him come oh my god he oh. plays it nice yeah, wow. that's a good move by gukesh fantastic chess being no, alert stupid. you know being alert of the entire possibilities on the board that's what gukesh did because you know it's not like there were not other moves you can just move your rook away but a5 is and, and he shot Guen is kind of shocked. Of he, course, he, he did not expect it. And also, it. Gukesh gets up from the chair, and you know, like this is the kind of move you want <laughs> to make and get up from the chair, because then you know your opponent has no way to. Uh, there's no move left. Wow, it is so pretty. I mean, maybe a resignation. I'm expecting, or how, maybe. What do you think? Yeah, I think maybe he can just try. Like for example, uh, <coughs> he can take, take, and then move the rook back. Okay, and tell me AB4, uh, knight D4, ah, AB4. Not. Yeah, there's not there's even no point. B6 because there's check and you can block with the bishop. So, yeah, or bring the rook. Beautiful. Or even rook B4 was possible. Yeah. Because B7 always true, true. there is a check. True. So, yes, maybe maybe it's a... <laughs> A5 is a classy move. A5 is move. a very nice move. You know, sometimes we get very excited and then when we get like Gukesh here and we say, Gukesh, you found A5 and he's like, yeah, uh, yeah what's you know, the big deal? No big deal. Yeah, I just uh, for me, I saw it three, four moves ago. But today I think <laughs> here he's happy at this point. Yes, yes for because, A5, he's, because he's, uh, he's walking there and, uh, you know, he's coming to the board watching it. And who knows, maybe he was actually looking at it a little while ago. Yes, quite possible. But I seriously, if I know, Tai Tai One's expression is like, wow, that's a nice move. That's sometimes you feel appreciation even for your opponent's True. idea. True. True. 
Oh, he makes the he movie takes the look. Yeah, I mean now it's and I, uh, Gukesh has to also. <coughs> I guess taking taking the uh, yeah. night is better. Yeah. You you take don't take pick. this po- uh, one. Yeah. So take here, take this. I mean, in some ways, Amruta, you can go rook back, rook c4, and maybe rook d1, trying to play this end game. But I mean, this is just king g7, no? Yeah, king g7. Slowly, it will collapse. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop down. That's too much. No, I think maybe a move, one or two moves, he will play. Uh, not more than that. Yeah, and maybe we can then try and get Gukesh here if we can uh, uh, in our in our studio to end today because yeah, it's been a very exciting day of chess. Again, two decisive games. Also, if you see some of the draws or draws which are happening, they yeah. also have a lot of flavor in them. Mm. Then they are ending in a draw. Yes, no no short draws for sure until now. Yeah. Does that mean that today now Gukesh becomes India number one? <laughs> oh, if he wins, because, what would be the Yeah, it all the time keeps changing, yes. Yeah, because, for India right because, now, because the phase Prague is... Prague had become uh, India number one yesterday. And then he lost today, so he will lose some rating points. Then Gukesh now uh, goes up. Maybe you can check. You yeah, will see. It's not a big thing. Yeah, like now... At first, when uh, for the first did, time when it happened, it was a did big uh, thing. surpass Anand, thirty-seven years of uh, being on number one spot in published ratings. That was a big moment for sure. But then, uh, since then, there have been many ups and downs. Yeah, but uh, actually, today Gukesh's opponent's rating is two six uh, something, right? So yes. he won't. How much? Po- how many points will you he get? You get generally think? three, three and a half points. So I'm, I'm not sure because he has two seven four six point seven, which he has two seven five zero point nine. So he needs at least more than four points. Right. So it might be on the edge. Mm-hmm. Amruta really getting into the maths mode there. Oh, by uh, the way, very important is Arjun is right now in live rating list India number two. Yes, Arjun Eric I C is also gone to Shenzhen, and in fact, from tomorrow starts this another super tournament in China with uh, Arjun Eric I C, Anish Giri, Artemiev, Dubov. Wow! Uh, it's a very a strong tournament. strong event uh, starting at the in Shenzhen. So I think a lot of people. Will Ding be playing? No, Ding is not playing, nor is Wei from China. But there are uh, a few local uh, GM like uh, slightly. Lower rated GMs who are playing. <coughs> but Thaidai Wan is now just thinking what is the best way for him to continue this game, uh, which looks like there isn't any good way. Sometimes the A5 move is sinking in right now. No, like. But for sure, today is not going to be a long day like yesterday. No, no. Now it's, That's I think sure. in the next five minutes, this game gets over. First two days we have seen less of d4s and c4s. I think e4 has topped yeah, the move. e4 has been the one of the main lines, uh, main openings played. And Amruta, should we have a quick look at what are the pairings for tomorrow? I can let you know, of course. Yeah, let's see if what is what can we have in store for tomorrow because tomorrow there yeah. is, there's going to be. Also, some exciting games. There is. Yes, tomorrow we have Norderbeck versus Navar. Oh, wow, we have it over oh, here. Beautiful. And also Thank the video, you. by the way, he makes the move. Rook B1. Wen Thai goes Rook B1. Gukesh chops off the piece. King goes to F1. And now, can we just. Ah, you can't take, yeah? Like. Maybe we can look at the board yeah. only. Uh, yeah, let's look at the board and then come back to this very in thank, uh, very interesting pairings. If I take on a4, now suddenly the game is drawn. <laughs> because you go b6. And because the bishop c6 threat is stopped. Yeah. 
after king f1 no king f1 uh, so we can't take the pawn okay what happens for rook b4 rook b4 ab4 a5 uh, not a5 still b6. e2 you wouldn't want b6. to enter in there right no look this is interesting actually rook b4 takes that's takes a mistake b6 right wow. i was thinking oh but b6 bishop c6 there is bishop c6 a4 a5 b3 a5. no 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 b3 yeah. because you don't have a6 Ah, I, I was also thinking if we can just stop it like this, the pawns. But the main problem here yeah, what's the problem? is that king e2. White brings his king and wins this pawn and then winning <coughs> this will be very tough. Hmm. So maybe not rook b4. Oh, he resigned. Ah, what did Rook c4 was played by. No, king no, g7. After. He played, he was bringing his king in. Okay, and, is in no hurry. and the thing is after b6, he was just going to go back <laughs> and defend. So in that way... Gukesh was winning without much of. Um, He's you know, telling uh, something. Drama there, but yeah, Gukesh and uh, Thai Dai one start to analyze, and Gukesh actually now joins Nadir Beck in the second position in this tournament with one and half out of two. We have had uh, Parham, who is the sole leader, two out of two, and then two players on one and half, right? Yeah. Yes. Then many on one then in that case. If if Gukesh comes here, I'll ask him first question. How did it feel to play a five move? Exactly. <laughs> and uh, my uh, uh, my expectation is that he might say it was normal. <laughs> no, I like. Oh, I was. I I really liked when I saw the move. I was very happy. Ah, I you think, think that was, that's what he says. Okay. But it would be great if we can get Gukesh here for that move. It's really important. Yes. Very By but the way, uh, we did yeah, have the results parents. on the on the screen. If we can yeah. have them again, we can read it out. Uh, so we had Parham. Oh, this is standings. Parham on two. Uh, this is the results. Draw. Between Rapport and Bartel, Vidit and Noderbeck draw, Navara and Vincent Keimer drew, and then we had Parham beating Prague and Gukesh beating Thai Daiwan Yuan. And uh, yeah, the standings. Uh, let's have a look at them. In the standings, we have Parham leading, then two players on one and a half, Noderbeck and Gukesh, Vidit, Navara, Richard, Prague on one. Bartel and Vincent on half and Thai Daiwan has still to get off the mark here which is going to be quite important. Uh, and the pairings for tomorrow. Yeah, let's, let's have a look have at a the check. pairings. So it's Nodirbek versus David Navara, two unbeaten players here, right? Nodirbek on one and a half, Navara on one, uh, two draws for him. Gukesh versus Vidit, the battle of two candidates will be interesting Ooh, to follow. Uh, that would be very interesting. Mat Bartel versus Thai Dai Wan. This is also an important battle because they both are the bottom two seeds in the tournament. And Thai Dai Wan would really be looking forward to, you know, to at least get, get a draw here and get. But going. he's black, so it won't be an easy task. And then we have Prague versus Rapport, mm. uh, which will be exciting. Uh, yeah, because today's game could also affect, uh, you know, Prague because he was, it kind of changed drastically. So, it yeah. was a big emotional uh, turmoil there. But I think the game of the day tomorrow will be Vincent versus <laughs> Parham because um, firstly, Parham is in the sole lead. Secondly, Vincent uh, faced a loss to him at an important game in the Bundesliga recently uh, where Baden-Baden and Fierheim uh, took on each other. So, and thirdly, Vincent is finally getting white tomorrow. Yes. Will Vincent kind of make a comeback uh, and beat Parham tomorrow is the big question. So, that's uh, what we have from here. Uh, Producer Ji, do we have uh, Gukesh joining? And if we have him here, would be great to go over the game. Otherwise, Amruta, uh, it has been a, a very, very... Uh, exciting day of chess oh, for, totally. you, for you the well, yeah, which would be the game of the day guys you should go oh, and yes. vote for the game of the day right now is a very good time to do that uh, Prague have chess the... festival dot com slash voting go there and choose your favorite game 
and you can vote for it and yeah. of course if you are in and around prague please do visit hotel don giovanni here not only do you get to sort of uh, meet the masters follow the commentary here but an open tournament is also going on where there are several strong grandmasters and players who have come in fact there are a lot of well known streamers who have come across the world we have the botes sisters here we have dina belenkaya we have many more players who are here so it's actually very exciting this this place is bumbling with energy yeah today when i went down so agar there was this demo board and there was a position set and of course i had a lot to do i've taken a photo of that position later but it's just so nice just a position set up over there for people walking wow. by they can try to think and solve there's a book besides there from which the position was set ah. up it's it's really nice it's yeah in competition ah that is Oh, it's oh. a mate into. Did you get the answer for mate into? Yes, I did. Oh, wonderful! And, uh, you can uh, submit your answer to an email uh, ah. connected to the organizers. I will actually right. then put it up on our social media that uh, you know this mate into is there. Uh, I guess it might be done by Yokanan Afek, who's going That's to be true. here. Wow, uh, he's, is he going to be here? He's going to be here, and he's amazing. doing the solving contest, which is happening uh, maybe tomorrow. more for in a couple of days uh, yeah. there is a solving Because contest here because he had he has written many books and his recent yeah. one practical chess beauty was yeah yeah it's a, a fantastic book full of studies book. very good book for sure okay so i will check if we have an update do is, is gukesh oh, maybe we can us? take a break and then we can see if gukesh is here otherwise we will just come and end this so guys see you all in a couple of minutes
Joining us in the studio is the man of the day, Parham Maksudlu, the sole leader of the tournament. Parham, what a win, first of all. And then you were analyzing until now. Yes. I think uh, Prague is the guy who I really enjoy to play against him. And uh, I think we both have like same behavior after lose. We want to just learn from it and say, uh, okay, it's uh, good that uh, he wanted to analyze. And I also wanted to analyze and uh, it's good that he accepted because uh, I think it was very, very uh, interesting game. And of course we, we had like many different thoughts that we could share after the game. So it was nice for me. Beautiful. That's wonderful to know uh, that in this age where people go back to their yes. room and check engines, yes. that you still find value in analyzing with your opponent. Yes, because I mean, we, we have different minds and I mean, at some moments we just completely uh, like have s uh, different opinions about the position. So it is nice to just get the each other I and mean, mm. get the point of each other from the position. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I want to go to this moment in the game uh, where you played this move F3. Take yes. us through your thought process I um, mean, because I mean, I I knew knight F3 uh, was normal. I mean, this F3 looks very ugly move, but in general, I, I was upset that I didn't check this move knight BD7 in the opening because I believe it's not a good move. I mean, uh, after knight queen c6 b3, is the main after I think knight c6 is the uh, probably only move to equalize. I mean, knight bd7, I'm sure, uh, okay, it's solid, but doesn't equalize. And uh, I, d I was upset of, of myself that I didn't check this move because when you prepare something, uh, you're waiting for your opponent mistake, and then you can catch him. But I mean, he made a mistake uh, so early in the game, and I didn't know what to play. Mm. So, I mean, this was uh, on my nerve like all the time. So that's why I couldn't make uh, good decisions. That's why you position. played this move F3 just so yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, just want I just wanted to play something weird. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like that's it. Yeah. And, and one question was, if he had gone Knight B, D5, were you a little bit worried about this move? Or? Uh, no, I wanted E4. Ah, E4? Yes. Sorry, first h6, sorry. Yes, h bishop h4. And now knight d5. Yes, this I saw. I think I wanted to play queen, queen d2. Yeah, queen d2, I think. Queen d2. Yes. Or bishop f2, I mean, both. And then you are okay with it. I mean, I, of course, this f3 looks very stupid, but what's... I mean, I didn't like my position. I was so upset that I am in the position that I, I am sure that black is completely fine mm. and I couldn't uh, make any problem for him. But, but I mean, he made the game simple for me with this, uh, with this kind of uh, playing like E5. I mean, at least I, w I had some hopes. This is not a simple position, yeah? This one is I quite mean, tough to play as white. Tough to play as white, but I had some hopes because I knew that this is unbalanced structure and it's always in these structures like some potential, some dynamic potential. I, I was waiting for his mistake to use this potential. When you played f5, what was your assessment in the position? I thought it's like 0 0.5 for black. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it was my only chance to create some counterplay. And hey, I mean, in general, uh, I think my problem was not to, to play this position. My problem was uh, yesterday when I was preparing, <laughs> I could have done much better when I was preparing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I How long did you think about this? I mean, like all the game. Like, uh, oh okay, o only maybe last 10 moves which I got a promising <laughs> position. I was not thinking about this because I wanted to play good. Mm. Okay, it's not professional to think about your mistakes like the whole game, but I mean, uh, also it's not professional not to prepare well yes. in this level. Yes. So, I mean, you you should really care about this. Today it worked out for you. <laughs> okay, luckily uh, he went uh, Also one more went question, wrong for him at some point. Before queen g3, like at any point of time, were you even considering ideas of g4, g5 or you were very sure that? I was considering, but I said, okay, g4, g5, let's say, uh, let's say here your opponent is on g4, yeah? I mean, it's even white to move. You play g5, 
Okay, rook d8, what's next? f6, like, okay, queen moves, okay, fg7, king g7. This is the best you can get, and then what? Like, knight e6, knight f4 is coming, like, and this knight on h3 doesn't move. <laughs> That's why g4 <laughs> looks very stupid to me. I, okay, I thought, okay, after queen g3, at least I have some uh, straight plan with knight f2, knight g4. Okay, here, actually, I mean, I knew that uh, engine shows that black is better, but... Over the board, I had some practical chances. Like some. So, so here, your idea was move the queen, get the rook. I mean, my idea was first to play h3 and then f6, queen h4. Mm. Which is and what you I, want. I, re I really count on this knight on h6. I, mean, I thought this this will save my. But there was one thing. <laughs> Why didn't you go here, uh, uh, knight f5? Yeah, like uh, sorry, when you went rook f5 at this point. Why not knight f5? What was stopping you from making this move? But uh, I didn't understand what's the plan after knight f5, like what am I doing? Because rook f5, at least I wanted rook h5 and then move the knight. And I think with uh, one more rook in the attack, it should be better mm. to play knight f5. Because I couldn't see the way that he can stop me from playing rook h5, knight f5. Right, but he went b4, which was actually quite a practically interesting move. I mean, he so had to do something. Yeah. What were you calculating for rook f5? Your main, was there any main concern? Five I mean, it's not really. I mean, th this is not the kind of position that you have to calculate. This is just like you just uh, go attack with all pieces and then you <laughs> will calculate that. I mean, it's like a puzzle rush. Yeah? You just uh, go with all the pieces to attack and then you will have some tactics. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, okay, exactly happened in the game. Yeah? He missed Rook F6. But, uh, but it's a uh, huge pressure on Black here. You know, like he was low on time, it 30 seconds, and he can do many, many mistakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Vincent was here in with us when this was happening and he said it would be wise for Prague to actually sort of play knight c4 and take a draw here. But here I would play knight f5. I'm not sure if it's, it's draw. Knight c4? Ah, you would, you would continue, yes? Yes, knight f5 and then rook e f3. I think uh, uh, still very... So you had no thought of draw in mind? No, I mean... the. Actually, after, okay, here, I thought he can make a draw with knight d2. But, uh, yeah. yes, and knight d2, rook e3, knight c4. This is, like, I cannot do anything. But, but, but after he also wants to he, win. He wanted to win, and, and I understood, but I, after b5, I mean, I was playing without any fear here. Like, I, I was sure that it's no chance to lose this position. Wow. Like, it was such a big counterplay in my mind, like, with knight on h6, like, always so many mate interests so i thought okay i will never lose this game your intuition was very strong for this yeah yeah i was after f6 i was super happy with my position i think he just underestimated a bit and rook g3 queen d7 and here uh, king h1 uh, yeah i know it's uh, okay i was also low on time i played this move less than one minute on the clock and I just didn't want to get into tricks. I mean, I knew I have a very good attack, but okay, king, if, if I play king h2, there's always some knight f1. I mean, not here, but I mean, I have to, let's say my plan is to play rook h5, knight f5, to have this uh, good attack on h7. But I c after king h2, I can never move the rooks. This is my problem. Mm. That's why I play king h1. But I mean, it's always very hard to make this decision sure. for the king, like in all positions. It's very difficult. I mean, even in some position, like even knight was not on d2, engine was trying maybe king f1. <laughs> like you can <laughs> never know what engine suggests True. in this kind of position. True. Even queen g4 was a very classy move, actually. I mean, I, after the game, we discussed a lot about this position, and I think uh, rook g3 is the best. Yes. I mean, rook g3. Actually, rook f2 was uh, very Okay, rook f3, I mean, yeah, I never f2 think about rook f3. Yeah, it's <laughs> because a Because I, I played rook f5, and rook f2 looks very dubious. Yeah, it's not a human. Yes, of course. Yeah, it's, uh, but you were considering queen g4 and rook g3. Rook g3. Rook g3, uh, actually, I saw that after rook g3, uh, knight c4, rook g4, knight, uh, let's say, knight c3, I have rook f6 i mean this i saw and this is very uh, wow. brilliant because after rook g4 i can play rook f8 king g7 rook g8 i think this is just brilliant yeah and yeah. i saw this i calculated this that i'm winning but i didn't play rook g3 
But maybe, I mean, uh, maybe Queen G4 is better, I don't know, but Rook G3, uh, after the game we couldn't... D In time pressure it looks more... Yeah, it looks just killing, yeah. But okay, I mean, Queen G4 also looks yeah, nice. very, very nice natural move. move. And you didn't even think for a bit, yeah, like when he played... Okay, Knight yeah, I mean, this was my trap after King... <laughs> I thought, okay, is it possible for him to play Knight E6? Okay, I say, yeah, there are some hopes that he play, <laughs> but after he play... Uh, Okay, first actually I thought, what, what did I miss? And then I rechecked the position, okay, Rook F6 is winning. Amazing. Well, uh, Parham, you are on two out of two sole lead. You came from Bundesliga where you won a crucial game against Vincent. Yes. Tomorrow you play with him again. Uh, tomorrow he's your opponent. Any thoughts okay. about it? Uh, I didn't know that I play it's against him tomorrow. No, we, we were but discussing I mean, when Vincent was here. Uh, I think... Uh, yeah, it will be a very interesting game for sure because he's also uh, very young and he, he plays uh, fighting chess. I always enjoy against this kind of uh, players. So I think it will be a very, very interesting game. And, and I think from your, you lost some rating recently, but now you are getting back there. Yeah, you are I mean, in, in the flow uh, again upwards. Yeah, I mean, one bad tournament can happen for everyone. It's just uh, uh, important not to lose the track because, I mean, I think in any best player uh, he, uh, career was some bad tournament for sure. And okay, for me was this Vicon Z, which I believe I played very, very good chess. At least in some games, I, I really deserved to win and I didn't win. But okay, what to do? I mean, I, cu I couldn't stop and wait <laughs> to see my rating just goes down so i tried very hard and i think uh, the results are coming yeah. finally like i always uh, enjoy asking you some open-ended question my last question for today is what's your aim for this year particularly uh, for this year i mean okay it's it's more likely a joke but uh, my my plan was to win all games. <laughs> 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 like no, that's why I, li I like to ask you this question. Because yeah, I was thinking, okay, I'm uh, doing uh, workout every day. I'm doing training like every day, at least like seven hours to ten hours. So why I shouldn't win all games? <laughs> I was like this. But okay, it won't happen for sure. We remember your interview where you had mentioned in the very beginning that you would work for 18 hours a yes. day, yeah, really 18 after to 20 yes, hours a day. After this failure, but I thought I, this I started amazing. again to work like this and I feel very good. Yeah, and maybe uh, winning all the games may not happen because, yes, but at least that's the aim with which you are playing. I mean, that's the spirit that's that the spirit you with want, which yeah. you are playing. Wow, that's wonderful to know, Parham. Thank you always for Thank joining you. us, uh, playing inspiring chess, fun chess. <laughs> it's so much fun to follow your games as commentators. We will, whenever we go to your board, something is some, happening. Yeah, some fire on the board. Some fire on the board. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. And okay. uh, see you soon. See you. Uh, all the best for yeah, tomorrow. For you too. Goodbye. And guys, with this, we will end today's broadcast. Uh, it has been a wonderful day, a very, very exciting day of chess. Parham Maksudlu, what a chess lover he is, played for close to four hours, analyzed for one and a half hours, then came and did this interview, now we'll go to the gym, then we'll have his dinner, then we'll prepare tomorrow for his opponent. Wow, that's the life of a professional chess player there for you. And it's always fun to hear his thoughts. He's in such a such a honest and authentic yes. when he comes, he shares everything, what he has calculated, what he has thought. I think it's wonderful to have him here. Yeah, we are lucky to have a player like Parham fighting in every tournament, uh, uncompromising chess. He's the sole leader of the Masters tomorrow. The next round will begin at 3 p.m. here at Hotel Don Giovanni in Prague. See you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay still. Stay on by my side. So pretty. So pretty and so kind. I, I love your leather eyes. Reflecting.